Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm so happy that you've taken your time to join us on this late night with Lisa and friends. I am surprised that I got anybody to show up <laughs> considering the lateness of the hour, but I I do have a, have a tendency most of my life to be a night owl ever since I was a child. So I'm not surprised <laughs> that I find myself doing something like this. And I'm so glad that I was able to twist the arms of two of my favorite people. Ben has joined us again tonight. He's also going to be running the uh, the live stream here and assisting us with all the technical stuff. And Sister Angel will be joining us shortly. She, We've already uh, spoken with her. She's uh, putting the finishing touches on some much needed important business, and she's going to be joining us right away. So um, we're going to be talking about some very interesting things this evening. I think that you will enjoy the topics that we are going to discuss. Now, I know we're going to cover just a couple of things. So uh, you can anticipate we'll be talking about some health solutions this evening. Uh, also, uh, spiritual attacks and fasting. So that's what we have on the table for tonight. And then we're also going to go wherever the Lord leads us. Uh, ben, would you like to say hello to the audience this evening? Uh, hey, everyone. I'm also. Uh... A, a night owl too so i'm actually wide awake even though it's 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 over it's past 11 o'clock in, in in michigan so uh but it's good to be here with everyone and i'm looking forward to the conversation that's awesome and sister angel will be back with us shortly when she pops in i'll let her say her introduction again greetings to everyone in the chat thank you so much for taking your precious time to come out this evening and hang on late night with lisa and friends um, so Ben, uh, did you have a good day before we get started here? How'd your day go today? It was pretty good. I got caught up on a lot of work that I needed to get done, uh, so I could be free tonight. So, um, it was a pretty normal day. Finally got some sunshine in Michigan. It's been kind of dreary for a long time. So spring is starting to, starting to look like spring here, which it just does, uh, wonders for my spirit. <laughs> I totally understand that. I know, but out here, where I am is still kind of gloomy doomy and I'm still waiting for it to feel like spring because it still feels like winter and still um, quite chilly at times. So I'm looking forward to it too, some sunny days so I can get some of that good old vitamin D3 from the sun. <laughs> yep. Um, let me see here. My day was a little, hmm. Eh, disappointing. I had wanted to go spend some time with family and would have, but I was feeling a little under the weather. So I opted to stay home and take care of myself. And I think it was the right thing because I feel so much better right now. So I want to give a shout out to my mom. Happy birthday, mom. Sorry I had to miss today, but you knew what was going on with me. I appreciate all the love from the family. Love you guys. If you're tuning in, thank you so much. Well, Ben, hey, let's guys. Go. Oh, hey perfect timing. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally, it's been yeah. time to any better, sister. Yeah. You You're already? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Far more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, sister Angel. Uh, this is Sister Angel Martin, everyone. Say hello, Sister Angel, and uh, Hi, let's guys. know how your day went today. Oh, pretty good. I um, got to go to the, the few things that's open, the nursery uh, down, down the road here. Um, and uh, some really like just keep wasting money on plants because there's hardly any other anywhere else to go. And by the time I, by the time I remembered that all the stores shut down, uh, you know, around here right now everything's closing down at like eight o'clock, nine o'clock max. Um, I I realized we needed a whole bunch of stuff that was pretty crucial, and it was too late. So, um, yeah, that that was kind of a bummer. I'm getting pretty tired of this, and they extended our shutdown until May the first. So that's annoying. But other than that, uh, very good, uh, very blessed, and uh, happy to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to let Brother Ben get started on kicking this off tonight, uh, where we're going to talk about some health solutions. We're all just going to kind of talk about things that we've discovered that have worked 
either wonders or we've seen maybe even miraculous things happen uh, for other people. And we're just going to share them with you guys tonight and kick around some ideas. So, Brother Ben, I'll let you go ahead and take the lead on that. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you can. Um, yes. So I just want to share a couple things I think that health related things that uh, really were uh, transformative for my life. Um, I probably wouldn't be here probably uh, uh, and have the energy to do what I'm doing now it, we're in it for these discoveries. And I, I do believe personally that uh, the Lord led me to both of them. Um, and some of this might be old news to you uh, and some of it might be new. And so I'm not pretending I'm going to have anything earth shattering necessarily, but uh, I just want to give you my testimony and uh, and and uh, encourage you to look into this. Um, so a couple things. Um, I would say about 15 years ago, uh, I used to I used to drive a lot for my job. I mean, I was on the on the road 90 percent of the time. I used to drive all the time, and I heard an ad just for vitamin D3. Um, and I'm not, not really going to be talking about D3, but this is the uh, just kicking it off here. Um, I learned about vitamin D3, and, and it talked about all the things that could happen if you're uh, if you're deficient in vitamin D3. Um, and they mentioned specifically that, you know, people, uh, with our, with our modern lifestyles are spending so much more time indoors. Um, and, uh, that we're not getting a lot of the vitamin D3 that we used to. And, uh, vitamin D3, if you're not aware of, it's made in the skin, uh, primarily through, you can get it through the diet, but it primarily comes through, uh, contact with the sun. So again, being indoors, you, you're not getting that same level of vitamin D. So I responded to this ad and b b purchased uh, this vitamin D uh, formula, if you will. And immediately I started feeling, uh, well, not immediately. I, I say within 30 days or so, I immediately uh, started feeling, um, well, first of all, I would say just in general, my, my hair before was like really brittle. My hair was brittle and it started turning to like, it was like almost alive, like cloth-like. It was just really... Uh, I'm not sure what the right term, but it's just really, um, it just felt really, um, alive essentially. And, um, my skin before was like really, uh, kind of almost transparent and it, it, it was kind of gross. I mean, it was just kind of like certain parts of my skin, look at my hand and I could just see my veins right through it. It, it was just kind of disgusting. <laughs> um, and this is the, one of the main things I used to get really extreme canker sores. Um, and my job is, and was, uh, very, um, stressful. And, uh, the, it seemed like the more, t more stressful it got, the more canker sores I would get. And it would, it was the point where, uh, I, I, I couldn't speak. I mean, it was just so painful. It would really kind of grow. It almost like they would appear in the middle of my tongue and it, it was just impossible to talk. It was just terrible. So I get a lot of canker sores. Um, and, 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 and specifically in the winter, uh, I would get extreme cabin fever. I was just utterly depressed and feel like I couldn't get out of bed. Um, and it was getting really bad. And so when I took this vitamin D, I immediately uh, saw a reversal of all those things. Um, one of the main things I experienced uh, was my teeth, also my teeth too. Um, I used to have really extreme uh, tooth sensitivities and uh, those completely went away. My canker sores completely went away. I found that um, my cabin fever went away. Um, all my senses just felt like they were amplified by the sense of touch, the, uh, the sense of smell, uh, things tasted better. Uh, it was just really, uh, really great. Uh, um, and so uh, I knew about that for a long time. And, and I, I recommended to friends for like 10, 15 years, hey, you got to take vitamin D, you got to take vitamin D. And they would take it and they wouldn't really uh, have the same benefits that I, I experienced. And I always thought that was kind of strange. Well, about two years ago, I started uh, realizing that, uh, or I stumbled onto another major discovery, and that is vitamin K2. Um, and what, and so one of the things I found out is that the vitamin D supplement that I was taking was one of the only, was one of the few, if not the only that included vitamin K2 in it. And so it wasn't just the vitamin D3 that I was taking that helped. I believe I'm convinced wow. now it, it was the vitamin K2. And so, um, a couple things here. Um, the, uh, forgot what I was going on here with that. <laughs> Uh, you were saying that the vitamin D uh, that you were taking yep. was one of the only supplements that had the K2 right. in it. Yep. And, and that's so, why you believe it was more effective for you than maybe what your friends were grabbing and using. Exactly. Yep. I'm glad you, yep, you picked that up. So um, 
and so I started researching researching vitamin K two more, and apparently vitamin K two reason it's it, it is getting a lot of airplay now, so it's it's finally getting the attention that it deserves. Um, but uh, so you you probably start hearing about it more and more. But basically, it, it was one of the vitamins that was ignored for years and years and years because uh, it was confused by the medical industry uh, with vitamin K. So vitamin K and K two are are related, but they're really completely different in terms of what the effects they have on the body. Vitamin K is kind of like a blood. Um, again, I'm not a medical person at all, really. So you guys probably know much more about this than I do. But I think it's either a coagulant or it's a blood thinner. K is. So, and, and K is something that the body holds on to. It's a coagulant. Yeah, it's a coagulant. Okay. Yeah, please interrupt me anytime, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, uh, K is not something that def- most people are deficient on. The body retains it. It's not a big deal at all. So, but uh, doctors for many, many years said, okay, K and K1, they're the same thing. So no one's deficient. And they kind of ignored it. Well, there was a doctor, a Canadian doctor, I guess, I, I think uh, in the early 1900s, I could be wrong. He's a Canadian doctor. And by the way, all, all the things I'm sending, I'm talking about here, I'm going to send you guys, I'll put links to the, I'll share links to the videos and things like that to, for additional resources. But um, this doctor from Canada, he was a, a dentist. And he, you know, he, he was befuddled by the fact that, uh, you know, why, why are people in the Western world, why are their teeth so terrible? And he, and he, wa- he, wa- he was really, you know, he was a true scientist and, and something that people, real scientists are doing nowadays. And he went out mm-hmm. and hit the road. He went to India and Africa and things like that and studied these different cultures and, and said, wow, these people have teeth problems at all. They don't even brush their teeth. Um, mm. And their teeth are, are, are excellent. And so he did a lot of research and he, he did uh, a lot of studies and he said basically he noticed the people in India in particular mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. in Japan and Africa had really great teeth. They had no teeth issues at all. Their bone structure of their face, their faces were always very symmetrical. Uh, okay. And very, and very broad. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Ben. I, I have to interrupt you. Sure. Because yeah. right now I am astonished. You know why? Yeah, because too. what you're talking about is the lecture that I heard by Dr. John Wickham. Yes. Yep. That's who... it. <laughs> and, she, and you shared it with me. You shared really? it with me. Yeah. Really? Really, I, have, I, have, with I have really bad gum disease. Uh, that's really, really bad. And she shared with me the K2 uh, thing. Yep. And and I got some. So <laughs> I, I had been taking it. Uh, for years, I took a whole bunch of vitamins, like about four years ago, I started taking vitamins. I took a whole bunch and I felt amazing. And then I stopped taking some vitamins. I, I forgot which ones I was taking. Like, and so um, I, I'm, I'm still trying to find that magic one that what was it? Because there was like a whole combination I was taking. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, it's crazy. As, as you were talking about this, I was like, did Ben tell me that? Or did Lisa tell me that? You're oh, saying the same started- stuff. I started chuckling in the background, and I didn't want to seem in any way disrespectful, Ben, so I had to interrupt you because I'm like, <laughs> people are going to think we compared notes. And I promise you guys, I have never spoken to, to Ben about D or K2. Um, this is one. I just put the link in the uh, dis- the uh, chat there for you guys, and I'll put it in the description at the end of the show. Uh, everything we cover tonight, any videos and stuff, we'll put them in the description for you guys to go back and refer to them. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is... I've watched that lecture probably at least a half a dozen times. Yeah. And every time I do, I learn more information. It is loaded with information in there. So guys, you, you definitely want to watch that. And I want to, I don't want to steal brother Ben's uh, thunder here, but I just wanted to say how this is one of the reasons why these two people uh, have been invited to be on this uh, late night with Lisa and me right now, because they're just in tune with so many of the things that I'm in tune with. And if you're going to have a conversation with somebody, you know, you want to be able to have the conversation move along. And we, we just flow naturally because we're like, we're, we all kind of think in the same way, but go ahead, brother Ben, continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, all, it's all the Holy spirit. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's funny you say that. So again, I, I was taking D3 for years and years and years, felt benefits, but um, no one else was getting them. And so, uh, I stumbled on the, the John Whitcomb video about two years ago, I think. And I, I started uh, really searching that. And there's another lady too. And he, her name's Dr. Kate Ream Blue. Um, she has a book on it called The Calcium Paradox. And she basically talks about um, how the French, even though they eat very greasy and fatty foods, they have some of the best heart health and they have, don't have bone fractures. Uh, people in Japan, they have a food called natto, uh, which is, I guess, disgusting. <laughs> but it, it's 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 a fermented uh, 
some uh, some kind of fermented bean, I believe, but it's just loaded in uh, in uh, K two, and also I think it's fermented uh, soy. I think yes, yes, right. Thank you. Um, and then also uh, liver people, uh, liver people don't eat liver anymore. So again, to me, I, I, I immediately do. said, okay, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> you love it, huh? Okay. Well, <laughs> I, no, don't. I don't love it. it. I feel like a I like a vampire who hasn't fed. And then I, when I ate the first time I ate it, um, I, I didn't think I liked it, but I felt so much better right mm. away that I, I realized and it doesn't even like, so the taste isn't really the thing. It's just the, uh, knowing how good it is. I, I I'm always yeah. anemic, slightly anemic. So we'll go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yep. I, I, I take liver supplements, but, um, so it pill form so I can just swallow and not have to taste it. So if that, I was going to recommend that. that too, but, um, so what was I going? Okay. Yeah. Liver. So again, to me. This, this to me, this is no nonsense. It's uh, it's it's straight from God. Okay, so the sun comes from God. You know that you you are designed to be in the sun uh, somewhat, and you don't have to be in the sun very very long at all. Fifteen minutes, you get like ten ten thousand twenty thousand IUs of vitamin D three in the skin. Um, wow. Yeah, for free. And, and, yeah, for free. Exactly. So this is free stuff. And then the other thing. So again, that's sun. And what's K two? K two primarily comes from. Uh, like, like we talked about liver, and so that I, I believe that was a God provided uh, nutrient. Uh, it also comes in a lot of eggs as well. It comes from um, grass fed animals. So I guess uh, humans can't eat grass and, and produce K2, but animals can. And then if we eat the animals, we get that K2. So it comes, people historically got it from uh, uh, butter and milk from cows, grass fed cows, uh, liver, and then uh, like eggs. Um, so again, it's, these are things that I, I believe that God provided. It kind of, uh, you know, it, it was part of man's uh, part of part, supposed to be part of man's diet. But given our industrial, godless age, and we, you know, all we all this processed food, we all that all that good stuff is removed from our diet. So supplementation becomes, I think, important. And for, like I said, for me, it cured so many problems that I had. Um, and, and so, uh, to me, it was, in fact. Uh, would I so uh, let me go a couple things about vitamin K two real quick. Um, a lot of problems, you know, the n- n- the number one killer of people is heart disease, uh, brain aneurysms, and uh, people also in the Western world have a lot of uh, bone uh, problems. And K two fixes all of it. What K two does basically is it takes uh, well vitamin D three. Uh, my understanding, simplified understanding, is vitamin D three produces proteins in your body to tell it to your body to start processing calcium. However, without K2, that calcium builds up in your arteries, uh, so that can cause like things like brain aneurysms. Um, uh, what are those? What are those veins uh, that pop out? What, what are they called? Capillaries. Uh, no. Well, like, people, have, like, uh, people have veins. Oh, uh, you mean uh, varicose veins? Yes, varicose veins. Yeah. So it causes varicose veins, and it causes causes plaque buildup on not only your teeth but also your heart, and Vitamin K2 basically is, 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 you know, vitamin D3 tells your body to start producing or uh, processing cal- calcium, but K2 is responsible for directing it and taking it out of your tissues and putting it in your bones where it belongs. And so, mm-hmm. uh, and then vitamin A, retinol, vitamin A, uh, which comes from liver and things like that, that's responsible for uh, flushing excess calcium out of your body. But it, so, but, but K2 does a lot more than that. But one of the kind of, one of the key things it does is is uh, process um, calcium and uh, like but, so. But it's almost like a trifecta: vitamin D3, K2, and vitamin A. Um, and so, I take I have a, a pill that I take that has vitamin D3, K2, and um, and I take some liver pills for vitamin A. And basically what I take is uh, 180 milligrams or as it micrograms of K2. And that's what they say is good for like a general maintenance. But if you actually want to do reversal, and I have a video too. This guy had rever- a reversal of heart, he had heart problems, huge plaque buildup in his arteries and his uh, uh, heart valves or whatever. And, and uh, after a year, it was like reduced by 50%. And, um, and so that to me, that's just huge right there. Yeah. And also too, like yeah. I noticed my skin is smoother. It's also a lot of people are one of the reasons it's getting a lot of steam because I guess it reduces wrinkles and stuff like that too. But um, so again, just just uh, major things. I've been trying to rec- recommend it to brother Luke because he's had some heart issues, and um, so I think uh, 
any encouragement you could give to him about that would be great because I think he's a little bit dubious. But um, yeah, uh, but yeah. So uh, oh, so I. By the way, I take so I take three actually three hundred sixty milligrams micrograms of vitamin T two, and that that's actually like more like a therapeutic dose they call it, and that's if that's what you want to take if you actually want to undo um, like uh, damage that you might have done by taking calcium uh, excess calcium supplements, which I had, I had done. Um, so that that's one thing you guys, uh, that's, that's the gist of, it sounds like you guys are already pretty familiar with, uh, vitamin K2 and that's great. Um, and I, but I have one other thing, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm curious ahead. to hear what, hear what you guys say about vitamin K2. Okay. Like, At least you well, go first. Cause you're more knowledgeable. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what you think. I'm, no, I'm, you stumbling, are. <laughs> I'm stumbling and bumbling like- through this. Thing we call life just like everybody else called on the well, world. I all the the help I can get. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. a little bit more. You, you guys, I, like I was really into the vitamin things, and then I had three more kids, and so I have lost track of a lot of my vitamin knowledge. So, but I, like I need a refresher course because I, I, I was just kind of going off of like what I used to take, and uh, like I said, it's been hit or miss. But uh, I do have some. I do have some really good uh, suggestions that I that I, that I did maintain and managed to hold on to, but yeah, go ahead and elaborate on K2 because I'm still uh, <laughs> catching up with the K2 thing. Yeah. Well, um, and to elaborate a little bit on what um, Ben was saying uh, about Dr. Johnny Wickham, I put the uh, link to the lecture in the chat so you guys can check it out at the end of the broadcast at your convenience. Um, but he, you know, he's board certified in holistic and integrative medicine so and he was um i forget he says what his credentials uh are in that particular video i mean he was head of a hospital and (laughs) he said he ended up seeing the light because what they were doing wasn't working and then that he explains how he got into this um particular genre of medicine if you will but uh, it, it's an absolutely fascinating lecture. You will not be bored one minute. Uh, he has plenty of chuckles throughout the lecture that uh, just just keep it interesting and it keeps it flowing. But he, he loads you up with information about what K2 does in the body, what science has discovered it does. This is not speculation. I mean, they have studies on this. And he talks about just what Ben was saying, how it will pull this extra calcium that you might have laying around in the body out of these arteries and capillaries and veins where it's not supposed to be and put it back into the bones where it's supposed to be. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, But go ahead, Sister Angel. I'd like to hear what you have to say on it. Well, yeah, um, I just, I I, see the thing that's kind of miraculous is I always took it when I was pregnant because I knew that they, when I would, because I don't ever take like a prenatal multivitamin, I always try to take like the individual vitamins uh, uh, you know, the supplements, uh, by themselves, because just like with baby food, you don't want to get the mixed vegetables. Uh, you want to get the, you want to get the individual ones because they like water it down and stuff. So the multivitamins are not usually very trustworthy unless you get like a really good one. But, um, I, so I was taking, you know, individual vitamins that would be in, um, a prenatal and, uh, I always took K2, uh, and you know, it was, uh, you Lisa that told me that, that ends up making uh, your children have symmetrical faces. Yeah. Uh, and I always thought it was a miracle because I forgot so many things. Even while I was pregnant, I forgot, like, you know, which vitamins to take. Um, and uh, that was one that I just I, I just ran because I know that they try to give them a K2 shot when they're born. So I thought, well, so, you know, it, it'll you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's one of the things I should take. And so I, I, I would take that at least at some point during my pregnancy, you know. Um, you know, one, one of the trimesters, hopefully the, usually like the, the beginning ones. And, um, and so I, I'm really thankful for that, but yeah, I'm hoping that the, cause I know I have some sort of vitamin deficiency got destroyed. I don't know why I had scurvy <laughs> when I was, uh, like, like 10 years ago in Florida. It's amazing. I actually had scurvy. I was eating such a poor diet. Um, because I was like real depressed. This is like in a very bad time in my life. And I was eating like basically like frosted mini wheats three times a day. That's all I wanted to eat. And I was like really thin. And um, I got to the point where I, I actually was having like my gums were sloughing off. <laughs> and I went to the dentist and he was like shocked. He goes, it's amazing to me 
with all the vitamin C they put in our food, <laughs> uh, and you live in Florida, you've actually managed to get scurvy. <laughs> it was like a, I was like a pirate or something. And wow. um, since then, my gums have they they healed, but they I think it really weakened my gums. And so um, right now, I have my gums have receded really badly. And I was asking Lisa, like, what if she knew of anything that would, um, you know, that like would that that would be like a magic, <laughs> like a magic bullet for that. And she told me what one of the things she told me was K two. So I started taking that again, and um, and I'm hoping that to, I, I do notice a slight difference in that uh, my gums don't uh, are getting as irritated. But um, they want to do surgery on me, like, and I, I don't understand how you can do surgery to fix receding gums. It doesn't make sense. It seems like you just need your tissue to heal. You know, well, now, Sister I don't really Angela, understand. I, I got to caution you about that. Now, don't you go thinking. Mm -hmm. Don't you go thinking about this now. You just do what they tell you, right? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, <laughs> I what, mean, that's I just, what I can. That doesn't make sense well, to me either. If you have receding gums, how are they going to make, make it go back where yeah. it's supposed to with surgery? Right. It sounds like they, the only thing they can do is cut. Like, it, all they can do is cut how they can't add. So, so, yeah, I don't know that. But I know it's a lot of money for them when they do this periodontal surgery. So, um, uh, yeah, but that was, that would be my, my, res my last resort. If, uh, if I can't figure out what kind of deficiency I have, um, and you know, it's so hard to find a doctor that'll actually like test you for those deficiencies and try to figure out what, you know, what you're lacking. That's like a weird, a weird procedure. Um, from some of the doctors I've asked, you know, like, they're like, Oh yeah, I get, uh, they don't even know where to start, like where they, how they would do that. But, but yeah, um, I, uh, I know that uh, there's so many, there's so many vitamins that when I was studying that I, that I found out that our diet was profoundly deficient in, and uh, it's almost overwhelming. Um, but uh, 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 I will say though that I have chickens and uh, they, they not only grass fed, but they, they are out in the yard all day eating grass. So that encourages me that I at least have one grass fed source of like with the eggs um, that uh, eggs are like the one yeah, food awesome. anyway, but uh, yeah, 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 they I used to have a commercial stuff. called the Incredible Edible Egg. Yep, yeah, I remember I don't that. know if I you ever that. saw that. Okay, and yeah, and yeah <laughs> and they mentioned all the different things that are wonderful about eggs, and uh, yeah, Dr. Joel Wallach talks about this in his presentation, "Dead Doctors Don't Lie," which I highly recommend for oh, people. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's an excellent presentation. He covers he covers a number of health conditions, one of which is. Alzheimer's, which he says is a completely physician-created disease. And now, if you, if you, some of you guys aren't old enough to know this, but 50 years ago, there was no such thing as Alzheimer's. Where did it come from? And he said it is because doctors were telling people to lower their cholesterol and stop eating eggs. Mm -hmm. And <gasps> your brain is 85% cholesterol. So when yeah. people started taking chol cholesterol-lowering drugs, and then combined it with stop eating eggs and healthy fats, they started starving their brains of cholesterol. And he mentions it in the lecture, and he shows you the different studies and talks about the different articles about it. I'm going to put a link in the, in the chat for you guys to check out that lecture. It's, it's absolutely excellent. Go ahead, Sister Angel. Yeah, um, I, uh, there's so many different things that you, when you look into it that are uh, totally created by you know, the suggestions of, of uh, modern med medical wisdom and, and, you know, like uh, people that determine what our uh, dietary needs are and everything. And you know, it can't be an accident. You know, it can't be an accident that they just keep on doing like the exact worst thing, the exact opposite of what they should be recommending, you know, <laughs> for all these different conditions. Um, you know, and I don't think it's the doctors that, can, you know, consciously know, but uh, I, you know, I do think, you know, there's a reason uh, that the medical <laughs> uh, industry uses uh, the serpent on the, what is that name for that? The caduceus. The caduceus. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we know who's in charge and who's making, who's, who's the shot caller when it comes to, to uh, the loins uh, of the Baphomet. Exactly. And the loins of the Baphomet. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, really, the yeah. loins of the Baphomet is the medical symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, nobody really ever questions that. And, uh, I, I, you know, that's one of his primary ways of, of uh, making us miserable and weak. And, uh, 
I, 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 mean, I can think of so many different, and so many, it, it's almost, you know, you, you, the list goes on and on of things like that, of, of, of where they, where they tell us something is super unhealthy. And it turns out to be like, not only is it something we desperately need, but it's like the very thing we needed to fix the condition they claim it was causing, you know? Um, and uh, I know uh, my husband, Joel, he just came, you know, he got, the doctor told him his cholesterol was high and uh, it, it's been kind of a, uh, you know, it's frustrating because on the one hand you're worried, like, well, should we, should we actually like, you know, is, is that, is that true? Like, is it really a problem to have high cholesterol? Uh, because you can read some things that'll tell you that, no, that's, that's completely made up. It doesn't, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that, but then you worry, you know, <laughs> you worry that it could, you know, that, uh, it's, it's kind of like a gamble either way. And it's so frustrating, um, to try to wade well, through all fear. that disinformation. Yeah, fear keeps you from being able to think correctly and process yeah. information in the way that you should. Yep. And that's yeah. one of the yeah. tactics because, because you can't operate in a constant. This is why I'm so angry at what the media has done, because you cannot operate in a constant fight or flight mode that is unhealthy for the body. That is for high stress situations and only, you know, uh, very rarely would you even have to go there with uh, the chemical reactions that happen in your body when this happens. These right. people who are listening to this mess, scared to, to breathe, scared to go outside, scared to do anything. That is not the natural state of a human being. The body is always working to keep itself in 100% balance, homostasis. But they uh, want to scare the heaven out of everybody, and fear brings torment. And it can kill you. And listen to me, y'all. They already starting. They're, they're subtly slipping in these news reports. I saw two already this week where the, the news media is starting to say that the stress that this has put people under is actually going to kill them, not the virus. <gasps> They have already started say, talking about this. And I remember if uh, I covered this in one of our discussions, I don't remember what broadcast I was on at the time, about studies that have been done that when trauma happens to the body, whether it's physical or mental stress, it puts the body in a, in a certain state and that they know that if they can, if you, if you get sick, let's say, okay, Let's say you already have an underlying health condition, whatever you're struggling with, you're dealing with the stress that actually brings stress to the body. It brings stress to your family if they have to help you with that situation and be concerned for you for that situation, et cetera. It's putting stress on everybody. Then you have some other trauma, the loss of a job. What has happened to over 20 million people now? The loss of a job, the loss of their employment. Yeah. Now they have to struggle and deal with the issues concerning that. Uh, let's say something else happens like Not to mention the hospices and hospitals are closed. Yes. To uh, the loss of a loved one, the concern about even going to doctors, because I know a lot of people have perceived that maybe these people are not the, uh, not to be trusted because if you discover that they have lied to you, then they can lie on you, which makes them dangerous. And I think a lot of people perceive that, which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons if they, if they were sick for any condition, they didn't even want to go to the hospital. So yep. be that as it may, this That's study, mean. and I'll find it, and I'll put it in the, in the, the uh, chat for you guys in the description later, where uh, they attributed a number of points concerning your health level and the stress level. So, for example, a death of a loved one was like 100. Now, what they did was if you had one of these stressors, they said in that, that if your points, when you added up all the different stressors that they did based on this study, and you exceeded 150 points, that it was highly likely that you would get severely ill within the next 12 months. And now imagine what the stress is that they have done to people behind this, not, not even just figurative stress, but literal stress because of the what they're doing in society, you got to stand six feet apart, you got to wear a mask, so you get fined. Without. All of this is adding stress to people. And I believe it's deliberate to create this particular outcome. Absolutely. Well, and just also, 
you know, it's it, like, I, I know that they're trying to get as much of a body count as they can. And we know that they're not really discriminating against the actual cause of death. Anybody that dies right now <laughs> gets marked down a certain way. And, you know, I found out today, even in town, even in our town, which hasn't been too crazy about, you know, any of this lockdown stuff, uh, you know, nobody's going around getting arrested or fined because our cops have been really, really great about it. Um, took kind of took a stand and uh, said they weren't going to participate. And um, uh, but I found out our hospice was closed to visitors, uh, our local hospice. Um, and can you even imagine? Can you imagine uh, having somebody in hospice, you know, and they can't even see their loved ones and they're dying and, they, and nobody can visit them. And the same with, you know, a lot of the hospitals where they're not letting family visit, their, you know, the people that are in the hospitals now talk about, you know, explaining any rise in, you know, like, like what the average amount of deaths are for a given, you know, region or area, uh, that, that would really explain it. If, if people are in the hospitals and they're not even able to see their family members, um, the stress and the, and the, you know, the, the loneliness, um, uh, just of that, uh, it, you know, yeah, thank God be, forbid I can't it, even it, imagine. I, 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 it sounds like something out of a horror movie too. Mm -hmm. Because you got to pray. I mean, can we trust these people not to harm loved ones that are? Yeah. I don't know what they feel is a burden on the system because of their age. I mean, you do remember during these news reports that they were saying that yeah. people who were over 65 would not get respirators. If somebody who was 25 or 35 came in, they were doing that whole lifeboat scenario. You know that mess that they tried on to On top of not letting anybody ago? visit them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So wow. you remember how they used to do that mess? And, and they, <laughs> I was in True. high school when they started running this lifeboat crap where there's a, a lifeboat with a baby, uh, let's say a 25 year old, the mother of the baby, uh, a grandfather and someone who's disabled on the lifeboat. And you got to decide there's not enough room for everybody on the boat. So you got to decide who you're going to throw off the boat. I don't know if y'all remember that mess. And mm -hmm. I was I infuriated when they started asking those questions back. And I'm like, what, are you kidding me with this mess? I'm like, you know who you throw off the boat? The, the evil person that came up with this equation. That's who you throw off the boat. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. The, you know, the I mean, best oh, defense we have, the best of defense we have against all, all their attacks are one of the things you could do. Obviously, we know spiritual uh, health is the number one importance, but second, secondary importance is our physical health. Um, and stress comes from cortisol. And one thing mm -hmm. I do believe is that vitamin D3, one thing I understand about vitamin D3 is that like a, it, your body doesn't think of it as a vitamin. It's more like a steroid and it literally, oh. uh, yeah, there's, there's literally uh, parts of your genome. Your, your genes can't fully express themselves. My understanding, again, when I read, look, did research and this is like 10 years ago, but your genes can't fully express themselves unless they have, uh, unless they're activated by like D3 and K2 and things like that. And so again, that's why, you know, uh, I think part of the reason why I, I, I saw all these benefits. And so cortisol, it, 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 I don't, cortisol uh, helps, it's regulated by D3, K2. Um, also, though, two is working out. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, like, so about a year ago, about two years ago, I went to the doctor. I had a physical for the first time in like 25 years. And uh, I've always been fairly, uh, as a youth, I was like real, really, uh, really, um, muscular and uh i didn't really had a good physique um but i, I as i got married and had kids i lost it but and um uh, and so i went to the doctor and i had high cholesterol and it's, it's like it was so depressing um and I, I started just exercising and I, i'm as lazy as the next guy um but one thing i like about extra uh a lift weight lifting is it's almost like yeah it's like it's kind of like boiling a frog you know they say oh with well, you can boil a frog because it's it's slowly it doesn't realize it's being boiled and by the time it's, it's boiled it's it's dead well Weightlifting is kind of the same way where you, it's almost like uh, resistance stretching. So you start kind of slow and just slowly amp it up each time. And at the end of it, you're doing some pretty intense uh, uh, exercise. It's great for your heart and all that. It totally obliterates that cortisol, cortisol in your system. And, uh, it, it, and within six months, my, my uh, cholesterol was down like perfect. Uh, oh, wow. And so, I mean, it's amazing. Just a little bit of, you just do a little bit for your body and it, it will, uh, you know, it gives back so much. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, that's it, one of the things we were going to do is, uh, we got, we got the kettlebells. So, yeah. uh, uh, for, yeah. And, and, uh, but we, they also, we, they have a, 
a pretty nice uh, route in the country. So it's kind of a luxury to have a gym right down the road. It's like this place called Sarah Land. It's like kind of like a park. Um, and it's really nice. And if you pay like, I don't know, it's like 200 something for the year, you get like, you know, a pass to all the different uh, facilities they have and activities. And we were going to we were going to do that um, uh, this year. And of course, they closed that down. Uh, temporarily until until yeah. we're allowed to be uh, American, you know, <laughs> free Americans again. Uh, but yeah, like that's I've heard weightlifting is actually way better than cardio. Yeah, I, I, I like I, I was amazed. Like in six months, like right now, I'm probably the best shape of my life. Uh, I dropped like thirty pounds. I mean, I'm I'm oh, pretty wow. ripped right now. It's amazing. It's like I I'm forty seven. So the body is amazing. Uh, you know, it, you just are you going to the care. gym? I I personally have a very simple but effective uh home gym so i i like being at home first of all i don't like being stared at but secondary yeah um I, yeah just so and, and also too is that i could do it whenever like i could i might do it when it wrap this uh pot you know after we're done here i mean um that's why i like having yeah. it home it's just convenient you know and um, yeah i'll have to hit you up for what you what you consider the simple but effective home gym because that's okay, one thing yeah. I, I didn't know where to start uh trying to compile a home gym it is seem it does seem nice at a walk i i've been in gym memberships before and it is kind of nice, like, especially when you can go really late at night um, when no one's there, but um, it's nice to go in there and just have all this different equipment. So even yes. if you're like feeling lazy or whatever, you, you, if you're, if you just make a point, like to let these equipment in there, or at least, you know, like, like half of it or a third, you're, you know, you'll be in there for, you know, maybe an hour and you'll, you'll have done something. Whereas, you know, sometimes if it gets repetitive, it's a little hard for me to, to, uh, to, to stay focused if I have to do the same exercise over right. and over. But I will say the ab roller, I got an ab roller. This is one of my health recommendations. The, they, they, they're real cheap. They have them at target. Uh, and I think it's like generic now or not generic, but <laughs> I don't think it was patented. So there's all types of different ones that um, mine was like less than 10 bucks or something. And it's just like a little wheel that has two handles on either side and you get down on the floor and um you uh, basically roll the wheel out in front of you and back. And I, I guess you're supposed to suspend yourself on your toes, kind of like a push up. But so far, um, I've always just done it on my knees. But even that, as long as you're really uh, focusing on your on your ab muscles um, uh, when you're doing it, uh, it really, it, you know, it's it, it's perfectly effective. And I will say that using that ab roller because crunches and sit-ups a lot of times um they can actually be really stressful like on your back and um uh it's sometimes hard to do them right and uh, uh this uh i've managed to use the ab roller for a few years now and i was using it for only like i would do like 20 reps just once a day and it would immediately take away my back pain like after i did it like two days in a row like get back into it for two days it would take my back pain away which you know is pretty bad um, it would, uh, I also have this condition where my arms, it's like a neuropathy, um, where my arms, my fingers and my arms, uh, uh, will go like kind of numb and become really, really painful, especially when I'm sleeping. Like it's, it's agony when it flares up. It, I, I, I don't get any sleep because I wake up and it's kind of like, you know, when your arm falls asleep or something and then the blood starts rushing back in, it's painful, uh, right. or it feels like fire ants. Well, so that like over and over again all throughout the night. Uh, I used the ab roller. Uh, and like I said, only once a day for like five minutes and it would take all of that pain away. And also, um, it, you know, it would, it would, it would, uh, you know, flatten my stomach, uh, 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 pretty, pretty effectively, especially considering I was only doing it for, you know, once, you know, once, uh, once a day, which, you know, like 10, five, 10 minutes. Um, and uh, that, that was something I wanted to find was something I could actually use in short, like just a little tiny bit a day, but that would actually be that effective. And, uh, and like I said, you can modify it where you're doing it on your knees. If it's, if it's difficult for you to get up on your toe, your tippy toes to do it. And uh, I've heard that it's actually like one of the most effective ab workouts, but I think it, 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 go, it, it what it points to is that a lot of our pain comes from a weak core. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, because we're not, we, <laughs> Go on, Ben. You would know more about this than me. No, I was just gonna say, uh, I, you know, again, I like weight weightlifting because um, it again, you could you could slowly go into it. Just you're slowly warming your system up, and at the end of it, you're you're actually doing really intense stuff. But you, it it doesn't bother you, you know. And so I don't. I'm not extreme. Yeah. I, I I was extreme for a while, but then I, I realized, okay, I try to find balance. 
all I spend like 45 minutes every other day and, 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 you know, I'll do something like a, a set, for example, really intense for like five minutes, then take five minutes off, then do it again. So it's 45 minutes every other day, which is not much. And even within that 45 minutes, it's not constant. It's, you know, I'm taking a little bit of breaks and it, it, uh, I mean, I feel now I walk around, I just feel like I could, you know, lift up cars and throw them around. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. just amazing. It's just, you, you feel like a, a, you know, you feel like a and for women, <laughs> well, yeah, for women too. Like one of the misconceptions I had was that because I have I, I I put on muscle really easy. I have I Me too, have yeah. like quite a bit of muscle naturally. Uh, I think they call it like a mesomorph or something, and uh, that's what, what my body type. And uh, uh, so I was worried that if I start weight, if I lifted weights, that I would get too muscular. And um, then I found out that that's really not true. That when you do cardio, you know, as a woman, it really does not always doesn't you know, result in the most attractive, uh, physique. A lot of times it'll actually result in, you'll look skinny fat. <laughs> you know, that's uh, the, like the people that are always on these treadmills, you know, depending on your diet and everything. But, mm -hmm. um, I actually found out that weightlifting, uh, uh, is it, for women. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make you, uh, it doesn't have to make you bulky. I mean, I, I suppose if you're real excessive about it, but, um, you can actually, uh, j you just do weightlifting and it does, it'll, it'll have the same, uh, weight loss effects as like a whole lot of cardio, oh, but it'll more. actually, yeah cause yeah or yeah more <laughs> and it'll actually uh give you uh like you know it, uh, a feminine physique not it, it right. doesn't it, it'll just it doesn't give you like these bulky muscles unless right you it firms you it firms over. you up yeah it yeah, firms you yeah. up and so it uh it, so it, you, you you look great because it firms you up and then number two um muscle burns like i think five times more calories than fat so you, uh the only way you're going to get that muscle is to weight lift. And again, it doesn't, yeah. have to, you, it doesn't have to be much. And the last thing I'll say, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to preach on this cause I don't want to, it's like I'm harping on anyone, but um, if you were to do one exercise, you, cause you, Angel, you mentioned core. If you were to do one exercise, uh, I would say the squat is the best one because it gets really? your whole body. It gets your whole body in your core. It gets your, get your neck, it gets your face, it gets your arms, believe it or not. And they say that um, one set of squats is like doing a, a 50 yard dash. I mean, you're, you're now, breathing hard. With weights? Yes. Uh, well, yes. I was going to say without weights, it's like, I, I try to do squats and without weights, it's like, I don't feel like I'm, it's too easy. It's like, it doesn't feel no, like. No, no. Yeah. Use anything. weights. Yeah. Yeah. Use weights, but it doesn't have to be much, you know, and don't overload. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing people try to, well, men in particular, they always try to, uh, you know, they, it, uh, it's all about form. You know, people try to herky, they go herky jerky with stuff. You know, they great, you know, try to do it, you know, lift up and down as fast as they can. It's like, it's not about that at all. It's actually the slower you, you go, the better. Um, so again, I, I just think it's a, it's almost like a fountain of youth. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And then one other thing, when, if, if you guys want to talk about health related, I could just call, but cover that real quick. Um, yeah, go ahead. But, okay. So, um, the other thing too, and I got, I, I'd be willing, I'd be pretty confident in saying that almost everyone here has this problem. Um, it is called, uh, it's a yeast in the system called candida. Have you guys ever heard mm -hmm. that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times that way, way it'll manifest itself is that uh, uh, you have like uh, your tongue is white. It's, your tongue is really white. Uh, it means you got a lot of yeast buildup. And then also too, like your your toes and your skin will be kind of crusty. You know, you have crustiness in your skin. Um, mm. And uh, I didn't even know I had it. And well, that, other than I realized everyone had it. And, and what, what, one thing bad about candida is it's a fungus in your system and it makes you crave like sweets and alcohol. So uh that's one of the reasons you have these strong cravings. And so I took, I, I, one thing I learned, I learned, okay, uh, probiotics can uh, help with, um, well, that's the other thing I recommend do probiotics. Uh, gut health is huge, but especially for your mood and stuff like that. But um, the, uh, there's a certain um, form, a, a certain type of probiotic that, can, and it's only kind that I'm aware of that could kill this candida because candida is a yeast and it has like an exoskeleton. So like if you think of like an ant, you know, it has that hard, crusty shell. Well, mm -hmm. uh, a typical probiotic cannot get through that, permeate that shell until the candida just lives on. And so you want to get a, uh, a probiotic that has this uh, enzyme in it called chit chitin, sino or chitin sinase. Again, I'll after the show, I'll, I'll post you guys some links. I'll share with Lisa. She can post out of the show notes or program notes. Um, and you want you want to get a profile that has that uh, chitin cytonase, chitin cytonase or whatever that it has enzyme that can eat a, uh, eat away at that shell and it'll kill that candida. And so I I started a program, and it took about thirty days. But after like thirty days, towards the end of it, I started to get like a real 
like a almost like a real strong knot in the in my lower intestines, and I was getting like cold and hot sweats. I didn't know what it was at first, and then I realized, oh, it's this candida. It's breaking the spell essentially. So I said, okay, I'm going to power through this. And about a week, I powered through this week and just a little bit of discomfort. But after that week, it's like it was like a spell that just kind of. It, it was like shit. It, I was like doing, you know, I was sweating and, and everything else, but it, it, it kind of freed me. I just felt like a, I, I felt clean and uh, I didn't have those strong cravings that I had before. And it's something you probably should do like once a year, I, in my opinion. Again, it's candida, it's this is your system, and uh, most Americans uh, have a, a serious problem with it. They could cause all kinds of problems. You can look at candida, all the problems it causes, but um, there's a way to kill it. And so, uh, that was, and that's uh, just from the probiotic that you you just well, yeah, you but it's a probiotic with a special enzyme uh, uh, included. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, the the one you the one you mentioned. Okay, yeah, because uh, that's what I, I was. I thought there was all this complicated dietary stuff involved. That's why I never bothered because it's like I I I have I I've, ever since I've started having kids, I'm very weird. Like I I never get out of the pregnancy appetite where where I only want to eat like one specific thing or like like what like I can't eat what I don't want to eat. And whatever I do want to eat, that's what I have to eat. And like, so if I don't have it, I won't eat anything. And it's like terrible for my diet because uh, it, it, even if I don't end up eating a whole lot during the day, I'm, I'll end up eating like just some some crap <laughs> that, that that just happens to be what I'm craving because I don't have an appetite for for anything else. And so uh, it, I, I have a hard time trying to focus on actual um, like like a like a, an intentional diet because of that because it's like I'm just completely. Like I, I will, I will seriously just not eat all day <laughs> instead of eating something that I, that I don't feel like eating. Uh, and, uh, uh, so that's difficult, but now I know that I, if I, if I were to try, um, this, maybe, maybe that would even help. Maybe that, maybe that there's something, you know, uh, maybe that has something to do with it because most, a lot of times it does seem like it's carbs or, or sugar that I'll get like this really big fixation right. on, but I don't, that's, I won't yeah. eat a lot of it, but it's like all of, like, it's the only thing I will eat like the whole yeah, day. Yeah, that's my understanding <laughs> is that uh, candida basically uh, craves carbs, and it causes those. It causes a lot of um, the cravings. I, again, what I, I the thing I'm saying here is that okay, vitamin D3 and K2, those are pretty cheap. And if you want, I can, I can, I did a lot of research. I found like the two products that are cheap and have a, a good bang for your buck. Um, and so it's it's probably like ten to fifteen bucks a month you can get away with for uh, again K. I take one pill that has D3 K2 built in, uh, included. Um, and so that I, I could share that with you guys if you want. And then also this ProBio. Those two things, again, I, I you could go, you know, you can go really crazy with vitamins. They get expensive. And so I try to keep it simple uh, and effective. And the two things, again, were magic uh, for me were the K2 and D3. And then and then I, also, too, I think it's important to make sure you get a, a high enough dose of K2 and D3. Because, uh, it, 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 by the way, it's impossible, virtually impossible to overdose. It's they say that it's mm -hmm. more likely you you'll die from overdose of drinking water than K two or D three. Um, and the bottles the, typically don't recommend the proper dosage, at least when you get them right, at places right. like Walmart. They they right. totally lowball it. Uh, it, right. It, based on a lot of times, that even what you're, you're you're told you need to supplement your diet is based on basically figures that were were developed in like let's say 1950 based on like the mineral quality, like the minerals right. in the soil and everything from a long time ago before of our, our modern farming practices. So now what we're lacking in our diet is not at all reflected in, in, in like what, uh, the, you know, on the back of the, like whatever processed food where it says to present daily value, that's totally inaccurate because it doesn't right. take into account the difference now, today in right. uh, the types of, of minerals and, and, uh, and nutrients that are in the soil that are not, if they're not there, they're not going to be in the food. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. Everything Lisa. you think about it, all, all the things we used to drink, like K2, we used to get plenty of it because people used to eat liver uh, and all the, uh, we, we, you know, we, our products were made for animals that actually lived and ate the food that God designed for them to eat like grass. Well, they're all, they're not, it's not like that anymore. They're all eating grain and, and stuff like that. And they're all, you know, they're all uh, caged up in, in, in boxes and stuff like that. So we're just not getting the same nutrients that we used to. Lisa, you still there? Yeah, guys, I'm here. I'm listening okay. to you, um, making notes so I can bring stuff up uh, while you're talking here. Um, everything you guys are saying is true. I mean, I've researched this stuff myself. Uh, I literally, I don't even know. I think I'm at 128,000 plus different <laughs> views here on YouTube, and probably 80% probably of that has been health information. Um, 
the, I like watching these dry lectures <laughs> on stuff uh, to um, educate myself so that if someone I know does have you know, an issue and they're concerned about it and they don't really want to go to the doctor. And a lot of times people can't hear you when everything, when they're riding high, they can't hear you. But when, when there's a crisis and you're looking for answers, which is why we should be preaching the gospel more than ever right now, by the way, uh, it, 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 they can hear you. You know, sometimes people just, they need to be able to focus on, on, um, what you're saying because there's just too much noise. There's too much noise in just daily life. And if they don't have something that they feel is, uh, here's something that's relative to them, they just dismiss it. Even though it could have, if they had listened, it might've been something they could have helped somebody else with. Um, and, and that's what I've learned is, is pay attention to the information and determine whether or not it's important information, because even though it might not be for you at that moment, it might help you in the future or someone you love. But uh, I wanted to say that um, when you guys were talking about fungus, the uh, first thing that came to mind with the candida, uh, there is a gentleman who has a channel on here. No, he used to be on television. I'm not sure if he still is. Uh, Doug Kaufman. And he's a researcher. I don't, uh, I, but I don't believe he's a doctor. He's a researcher. He, he he invites doctors and different people who have um, a naturalistic approach to uh, medicine. Uh, they don't just pull out a prescription pad. They they try to look for the cause. Actually, that's the name of his uh, program was Know the Cause. And he has a channel here on uh, YouTube. I'll put a link in the uh, chat right now and then in the description later at the end of the show uh, or broadcast rather because we're this is not a show. I, I hate I don't even want to say that word. It's not a show. It's a broadcast. But uh, also uh, non-conventional. Uh, but he, he talks about. Uh, a lot of the different things you can actually do conventionally, like how to go to your doctor and tell them, talk to talk to your doctor if you have a good relationship with your doctor. He's always saying, you know, try to develop a good relationship with your doctor. And people who have underlying fungal conditions, when he brings evidence to prove that certain things are linked to fungus in the body, how you can go to your doctor and ask for prescriptions of an antifungal drugs like Diflucan and some other things that he mentions, um, you know, for to be on for a brief period of time that will attack that fungus and kill it. But for those who are like, no, I want to go 100% natural approach, um, there's, there's somebody uh, by the name of uh, Dr. Jennifer Daniels. Now, she uh, ha had a lot of controversy because concerning what she talks about, which is something that I have been using to treat any fungal issues in my body for quite some time. And it's going to sound crazy, but <laughs> if you research it, it ain't crazy. And that is uh, healing with turpentine. They have everybody thinking turpentine is a poison. When in fact, it you know, if you study it out, they tap the uh, pine tree to get the the turpentine from the tree, just like they do maple syrup. And I don't think anybody thinks maple syrup will kill you. Yet they have everybody convinced that <laughs> turpentine. Oh, will it's crazy kill that you. you say that. You know Owen Benjamin. Have you heard of him? <laughs> Owen Benjamin, the comedian. He's uh, who who turned into like a truther. He does all these. Well, he was on YouTube and then they like uh, banned him. He's 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 not like he's there's he's got a screw loose. Uh, he's got kind of like a cult like uh, his like his fans. He calls them bears and they're literally like a cult at this point. Um, it, it's and he does uh, say a lot of things that he calls himself a Christian. But like he's going down these crazy roads where he's questioning the divinity of Jesus. So not recommending him. But he started talking about turpentine. And uh, and saying that he's using it to try to like detox his body from well he calls them worms he says you know he thinks he's got worms he, he's I, like I said he's a little office rocker but he's been talking about turpentine and I, I and I had never heard of it but I had a feeling that he, that it probably was uh, beneficial but all these different channels now are clipping him talking about turpentine now people that could pretend to be truthers sort of uh, and just ridiculing him uh, saying that he's he's uh, 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 recommending poison to his followers and everything like that and, and and so it's funny that you mentioned that because when I found out what turpentine was I was like oh th these idiots man it, it's not it, they, we use a lot of natural plant materials as cleaning products it doesn't mean that it's poison but yeah go on I, I just wanted to I didn't know if anybody listening had watched those videos so it kind of blew up on YouTube and I wanted to, to touch on that because uh, it's kind of ironic uh, that uh, that you mentioned it. 
because I, I had just found out about it through him. No, that's fine. Uh, no, I actually hadn't heard about that controversy, although I know this whole topic is very controversial for people. But that's why you have to do your own research. And you'll discover, if you go to try to look for articles, you'll find some that are pro, some that are very, very skeptical, some that are against. You have to really look deep, y'all. They hide this information because they don't want you knowing that they're very inexpensive or darn near free ways that you can treat yourself and literally reverse because you can't use the cure word. Only a drug, according to the law, can cure, treat, or prevent a disease. So you have to speak in terms of like reversing a health condition or healing a health condition. And so I put the link to her uh, channel in the description. Uh, if you guys want to check her out and just listen, it doesn't cost anything to listen and to gather information. But uh, she she actually got run out. She was a Harvard trained MD. And she tells her story in one of her testimonials about how they they ran her out of the country um, for uh, her methods and her approach of wanting to treat people in really getting to the cause of the disease and treating people without harming them with drugs. And she actually tells a uh, account of one young woman who was in her 30s that was a mother that had children. I believe she's a wife and mother. And uh, she has a conversation with another doctor who's a specialist in this particular area that this woman was having trouble in. And so she contacts that doctor. She gets the protocol um, based on his uh, recommendations and gives this protocol to the woman as, as an MD. And within a few months, the woman dies. So of course she's distressed about this, she's upset. So she calls this other doctor with this urgency and she's like, doctor, there's a problem. And he's like, yeah, what's that? She said, you remember that patient I told you about? I had a consult with you about. Yeah, I remember, okay. Um, well, uh, sh she died, doctor, and he said, well, you, you did the protocol according to my instructions, right? She said, I followed it to the letter. He said, oh, no, no problem, no problem. She's like, what do you mean there's no problem? He said, well, if you followed the instructions, there's no problem. She said, yes, there's a problem. The woman is dead. He said, well, if, if you did everything I told you, there's no problem. Now, if y'all can't see that there's something really wrong with that, and I'm sure we're just preaching to the choir here, that did, how can how can that be okay in anyone's mind? You think it was okay to her children that she was dead? You think it was okay to her husband that she was dead or her family? No, and it certainly wasn't okay to Dr. Jennifer Daniels. And I, it, the way that she explains it, it's like there were certain things like that that catapulted her. And I call these doctors that do this people of conscience, where they look at this stuff and they go, "This isn't right. This doesn't make sense. This is not what I got into medicine for." And they flip that switch, uh, just like Dr. Whitcomb was talking about. He flipped this switch. This ain't working. We've got to do something else. We're supposed to be curing people, helping people, and healing people. And what we're doing ain't doing that. And they switch from what uh, we have known as allopathetic medicine to, and yes, I know I said it wrong, um, to natural medicine and, and being a naturopath and a doctor that's actually lo looking to actually heal the patient. Because in, in the words of uh, Dr. I think he was a doctor. I, no, he wasn't a doctor. Correct this. Uh, in the words of Bob Beck, who is a person who repopularized the use of colloidal silver, and we might talk about that for a little bit. Uh, he oh, said, yes. a patient cured is a customer loss. Now, the people say, oh, he is a quack. I don't care what you think. The statement is true. A patient cured is a customer loss. There's a reason they call it the medical industry, okay, or profession, because there is money to be made. And don't ever forget that. When you walk through that door, it's just like somebody going to get a repair to their car. You're a customer if you're the repair shop. And these hospitals are in business to make money as evidenced by this whole thing that ended up turning out where they're getting $13,000 just to diagnose somebody with COVID-19 and $38,000 if they get them on a respirator or what, no, a ventilator. So, mm -hmm. I mean, people, we're, we're not making this stuff up. We didn't create it, but we do have a right to critique it 
and look at it critically and decide for ourselves. When I say we, I'm talking about you to look at it and go, you know what? This ain't for me. This is not how I want to do it. It's my body. They're always telling you you have a right to choose. Well, you need to make an informed decision. You can go that way, but you have a right to ask to let me see the product insert. I want to know what the side effects that they always call. I say the direct effects, but they say the side effects of a drug is let me see the product insert. I want to read and know what my risks are. You have the right to what's called informed consent. And you will be surprised how many times, maybe not if you've had real experience with them, that they will not even give you the information. You have to dig it out of them. They act like it's a, it's, you know, it's a trade secret and they can't tell you about something you're about to put in your body or a procedure that you're about to have done. And they don't tell you what the actual ramifications, probability of that procedure is. They spin it in the best light, but they don't tell you about, you know, the actual figures that might really make you make a decision to go, I don't want to do that. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, no, I, I agree. Uh, I was going to mention the, the um, colloidal silver. Uh, that's been, uh, I, I got some good testimony on that as well. Yeah, that's what I, that was my, uh, that was my big, uh, my big thing that I was going to share. That's been the single biggest, uh, that's made the single biggest difference for me. Uh, Go ahead, in, guys. We in, yeah, Talk let's hear about what it. Go. Now. Oh, well, well, because uh, like you're saying with the vaccinations, I don't uh, vaccinate my children. I, um, made the mistake of giving my oldest, uh, my six-year-old, she got the DTAP. So that was the first vaccine uh, that was on the schedule for her. I did not let them give her the uh, hepatitis uh, B vaccine in the hospital. And I wasn't even anti-vax at the time, but she was in the NICU. And uh, I had seen a baby, a preemie baby that they gave that to crash. They had to resuscitate the baby. And I was terrified of anything going wrong with her. So I didn't let them give that to her. Um, and then... Um, uh, when she's about three months old, I got, I get, you know, she was up for the DTAP. I asked them to give it to the, her in a half dose. She got horribly sick for a week. She has screaming fever and they couldn't tell me what it was. They couldn't tell me what was wrong. And I said, well, this seems like it would be at the very least as bad as <laughs> what you were vaccinating her against like diphtheria, but at least we would have known it was diphtheria and you guys can't tell me what, what's wrong with her. Um, and so, uh, for, from then on, I was not going to vaccinate my children, but so since I don't, it is very difficult to find a pediatrician that will take them for any length of time. Cause, um, uh, uh when you try to find a doctor, when you try to get into a doctor without vaccinating your child, like it, it might be one thing if you want to stop vaccinating them once you already have this pediatrician established, but when you are trying to find one on the, on the premise that you don't want to vaccinate, nobody wants to take you. So, um, for me, uh, it's crucial that I don't have to always have my children in the emergency room if they get really sick. So I like what I had to find something that did that, that worked. Um, and uh, uh, actually, my grandmother had always been using colloidal silver. Uh, you know, I remember being like eight or nine and she got into it. And so I was familiar with it. But um, uh, I started using it. Um, it's been about three or four years. Uh, at first, it was spotty. But uh, 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 for at least three solid years now, uh, I have been using it all the time. And with my children, since I started using it, um, they, like, they've never even had like an ear infection. Um, they rarely ever get sick. They, they pretty much have never been sick except uh, this last, uh, like right, right around the end of the year. Um, because uh, uh, basically if I run out of it or if I, if I you know, if I, if I neglect to use it in time, uh, that's the only time that any kind of sickness even occurs. Um, and uh, uh, also if I don't use enough of it, uh, like, for, you know, in active illness. But so the first time they all, like all my kids, uh, especially my three-year-old, she had never been sick. She's almost four. She had never been sick until, uh, until de around December. Um, but um, uh, other than that, I have used it prophylactically. Like if they go to a you know birthday party or a playground, play with a bunch of you know other kids, um, I immediately give them colloidal silver after when they get home, uh, and they're homeschooled. So you would think they would get sick pretty easily when they start to get around a whole bunch of other kids, um, since it is rare. Um, and uh, also, I have had it like uh, uh, when I, I was starting to get sick. This has been a, a few years ago. I started getting chills and a fever. 
Uh, and you know, when you start getting chills so bad that you can't move, you know, you're about to get really sick. And, uh, I have had colloidal silver actually reverse the situation completely back to, to normal. Like where I was getting, I had chills and fever. I was so like, uh, I was, I was having the, what do they call them? Rigors so bad. I, I was sitting in a bathtub, uh, uh, half passed out. I, I took the silver and within an hour and a half, I was totally back to normal. I was totally better. I did not get sick. And um, I, I've just, I've had so many different times where I feel like I'm coming down with the cold or something. Um, I'll take colloidal silver, you know, not just the once, but I'll take it, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, a couple uh, uh, tablespoonful, you know, a few times a day and I don't get sick. So I haven't been sick except, like I said, in December when we all got sick, which is probably this bad flu that went around. Um, uh, uh, I have not been sick any other time because of colloidal silver in about three years. It's, it's incredible. Uh, and I have also seen it. I've even had a control group with my animals because um, about three years ago, when we first moved into this house, I had a little uh, feral cat that I, she was a kitten that I had rescued and had actually managed to, to tame her. She trusted me and her name was Sketch and she got really, really sick. Uh, she, she, cause I finally fixed her. I broke down and fixed her because she, uh, she was escaping the house all the time and, um, uh, and I was worried she's going to get pregnant. Well, it turns out when they, when they, when they were fixing her, cause she had just escaped and she was gone for like a whole day. Uh, well, she was pregnant, but they went ahead and spayed her anyway. And, uh, she got really, really sick because, uh, what I, it was like a mass transport event where you take them to the immune society and then they t take them to this, uh, clinic where they all get spayed. Well, uh, they did not have very good disease control practices because a whole bunch of cats that had gone that day got this horrible upper respiratory infection that other cats, not just her, were so sick they had to go to the ICU. We had her in the ICU for a week and to the tune of like a couple grand and they could not save her. She died. And I did not give her colloidal silver because she was in the ICU. So then, I, but I had five other cats and, uh, I knew I, I was so scared. I knew that they were going to get sick. They were going to get what she had. And, uh, cause she had been home, uh, you know, for a few days before she went to the ICU. And, uh, I love these cats very, very much. And, um, so what I did was I, I took the coital silver and I, I got, I had a nebulizer actually I have there and I, so the, cause you really want to get coital silver to the cats in this County that had to go to the ICU from that, that mass transport event, which is very unusual for cats when they get in, uh, you know, uh, basically a cold, uh, normally it's not that big of a deal, but this was something really, really nasty. And, um, so all five of my cats that I treated with the colloidal silver, uh, they had a very mild, uh, course of infection and, uh, 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 you know, like a normal UR, uh, URI basically. And they, and they recovered perfectly. Uh, the one cat that I didn't use it on, she she died uh, after we did everything to save her. I mean, thousands of dollars spent uh, uh, trying, you know, trying to, because you know, she basically got so sick she wouldn't eat. And oh, then wow. once that happens, a lot of times you can't get them to eat again. Cats are real finicky. If they can't smell, they, you know, they won't eat. So if a cat goes a couple of days without eating, it's very hard. That A lot of times, even if the, the disease isn't that deadly, they'll die from starvation. Um. And, uh, but yeah, so that's how sick it made her. And, and so I had the, like I said, so it was like a control group because, uh, uh, all, all my cats now, if, you know, if they ever start to get a little bit, a little sick like that, you know, I give them colloidal silver and, you know, or, or goopy eyes put that in their eye and it, it works for them. It works on my chickens. Uh, you know, chickens get sick a lot <laughs> and, uh, I put colloidal silver in their water every time I, every time I fill their water up and, um, uh, I had lost a couple to disease before I started doing that. Just uh, that, you know, they get different things. And if they get stressed out, you know, get a fever, they can crash really fast. Um, and uh, I haven't had a sick chicken in uh, a few years now that I, since I started doing that. Um, so that's one of the things I love about it is that it's, it, it works on pets too. It's not, you know, dangerous for them at all. And it, since it's kind of a, a, a cure all when it comes to like infectious disease, uh, it, it, that's, you know, what it seems like for me, because, um, like I said, a, a short of the, uh, uh, the stomach bug, um, the situation where you don't keep it down because it also, it can be a little bit hard on your stomach. Uh, if your stomach's already, if you're already feeling 
nauseous. I mean, other than that, I never notice anything, but um, it is hard. Like with my, my youngest, my baby who went to the hospital, that was because I did not give her colloidal silver for her, the RSV infection, because I was, had I given her some, she probably would not have gotten that sick. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's, I, my family, like my, my, my dad and my aunts, they're elderly and they, uh, every year they have at least two really bad chest infections. They'll get like bronchitis. I mean, it's, it's pneumonia. It's very, like uh, run of the, you know, it's like, like, like every time it's like par for the course, you can predict that they'll at least have one bad upper respiratory infection, <laughs> of, uh, you know, a cold or a flu that turns into and turns into pneumonia or bronchitis um, every year. And since I, I, I got them a nebulizer and, uh, and, I, and I turned them on a colloidal silver, they haven't had that in two and a half years because they, they use that the minute that they get uh, a cold or something. Um, and uh, they also stopped getting the flu shot, which, which helped tremendously. But, uh, but, they, but, but like I said, the, the, the you know, regular cold or flu doesn't turn into, uh, turn into these really bad infections, which you know, I was just so used to seeing with any older family members, or like my grandmother too, which is one of the reasons why this whole thing was so laughable with COVID-19 was you know, when like elderly people get, get uh, uh, an infection like that, I mean, it can turn pneumonia real easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so <laughs> making a really big, like it was like some new thing. It was just so ridiculous to me because I saw it so many times throughout my life. But, but yeah, so to me, it's been life changing. And like I said, it has to work because of my, the situation with doctors and my children and, you know, not really having a pediatrician consistently uh, right now, because I have my, I just had the baby. Theoretically, I have a pediatrician for uh, for all of them because there was one that was willing to see her, you know, for the first few months. But last time we went, she, the, I was pressured about how next visit will be vaccine time. So I haven't gone back because I figure it's just going to be, uh, you know, the same conversation. Like they forgot already that uh, I stopped seeing them with my last child because of, for the same reasons. Um, but you know, it's a it's a bit dicey too because when you you never know with a doctor, like they they can try to make a mess for you. If you don't want to vaccinate, they can try to call CPS. So I just kind of have to duck out once they start pressing me about it. But anyway, yeah, for me, it's been uh, absolutely life changing. And I know it has for my, for my, um, my, my, my aunt, my dad. I mean, it's been (laughs) really a a big deal for them. And uh, uh, even Joel, my husband believes in it. He, he takes it as soon as he starts to feel sick and he's very skeptical, but this stuff works. It really does. I, I've never, anybody that has, has actually like, like, like friends of mine that I've pushed it on, like my friend Kevin had a bad outer ear infection and uh, it was really bad. And he was home from work and his ear was like, you could see it from the outside. It was all swollen and messed up. And uh, he finally broke down. He's not a health nut at all. He finally broke down and went and got the colloidal silver I told him to get. And he was better in less than 24 hours mm. after uh, putting this in, putting it in his ear. So yeah, that's my story. I'm curious to hear what Ben has to say because uh I just know from experience, this stuff is, it's, I don't know. I, I know what they, why they say it works. I, I don't know. Sometimes I suspect what if we, it's that we have a silver deficiency, you know, <laughs> because it seems to work so well, but yeah. Well, my understanding is, yeah, well, well, my understanding is that, uh, uh, I think it, it, it uh, basically destroys germs at the molecular level. It basically mm-hmm. takes, it, it takes like, uh, um, An electron, valence yeah, electron. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it takes electrons from them and it just basically neuters them essentially. Um, I have a number of stories, but the biggest biggest one is uh, this was about a while ago. My friend, his cat, got ran over by uh, a, a car and it it cut it clean cut uh, the skin off its leg. And they were t- and they they were not uh, they were a very young couple and they didn't have a lot of money and so they took it to the vet like four or five times and, and they were doing all kinds of treatments and it didn't really help at all. I finally ran out of money and bought a bottle of colloidal silver. And within, uh, within, you know, days, it was, it, within a couple of days, it was immediately, it was healing over. And then, uh, but at the, at the end of it, wow. it basically the skin completely healed over it as fur. You wouldn't even know they had an injury now. Um, wow. that, that wow. was the biggest thing. I actually own a, uh, a kit. You can make it. I think I paid for about 10 years ago. It was like 300 bucks. Uh, yeah, that's what I forgot to mention that that's one of the greatest things about it is that you can make it yourself. And yeah. Okay, and, and, that and, and, silver so, wire. It's limitless. You can yeah, use exactly. Stuff over exactly. Over exactly. So yeah, you can buy a lifelong, a lifetime supply or a kit to make it your own as much as you want. And what's nice about the, the kits is that you can make two formulations of it. One is a more ideal for topical use 
and one's more ideal for in like internally. So if you're going to, you know, if you're going to put it in your eye or your nose or you're going to uh, drink it, there's different right. formulations that are more ideal for that. So mm -hmm. the kit that I have, you can get it. It's called silver, silver lungs.com. It's a pretty decent kit. Um, the thing I've cautioned, um, uh, well, well, it's nice about producing your own is that the, when you make it, the, 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 uh, the, it starts to break down after like six months. So if you purchase it, you may be getting something that might not be as effective because it's been on the shelf for uh, a number of months. So making it your own is 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 just that much better. Um, so yeah, oh, wow. I know people that yeah, claim that, that uh, when they used it for their pets, like just as a maintenance dose, they might put oh a couple of teaspoons in their pet's water mm -hmm. just to keep their pet healthy. And they noticed one day when they had run out, they gave their cat some water, and the cat didn't want to drink the water. <gasps> they oh, wouldn't wow. drink the water. And, 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 and they said they left the bowl there like all morning, and the cat's like looking, sniffing the bowl, <laughs> and walking away. And they realized, oh, you know, I didn't put any colloidal silver in there this morning. Maybe that's why the cat wouldn't drink it. So they go and get some more colloidal silver and pour it in there, and the cat runs so drinks the water that's weird i wonder if it's because they could maybe it has something to do with the um microbes or something in the in the water that they could smell or they might have gotten used to the smell of the silver uh, i noticed that my cat uh, my butters my my most spoiled of all she seems to be partial to uh water that has it and i don't put it in there enough for the cats uh maintenance wise but it's i should because you know it's also supposed to have um some uh benefit to preventing cancer Hey, uh, Angel, um, Victoria Sarton wants to know what brand of uh, colloidal silver, silver you used. Um, well, I have I've, it's, it's the best. I think the best is Sovereign Silver that I've, yeah, that I've that's tried. That's what I've heard, too. Tried. Yeah, because um, I know that when my friend uh, Jay Lynn, she was here, she got a stomach bug. And um, she took the stuff that we normally had, which uh, I believe it's the same – it, I, there's GNC sold it and now I think Walmart has it and Walmart has it for like 20 bucks and it, it works normally it works pretty good but I think the particle size does matter for different uh, depending right. on the infection right so right. she took the so that wasn't working the normal like the cheaper stuff uh, wasn't really doing anything for her stomach uh, a bug but we went and got the the sovereign silver and it worked uh, immediately like she was feeling better by the end of the day and uh and it has a smaller particle size so i i keep that on hand for for like really serious situations and then um right now uh, see it really just depends on what's available in the store we should be ordering it we should just order it but um but like so we can pick exactly what we want but uh but gnc has uh has something right now we, that's called trace we have like two bottles of that um i have so much of it right now and i didn't even think about how it doesn't store forever <laughs> so that's a good point then because we got we got a whole bunch of it uh, uh recently yeah because we were worried they were going to sell out of it because you know that mm -hmm. shill dr paul cottrell started uh talking he started uh, selling it on his website to prevent COVID 19 and which is great that it got the it got like actual like widespread like um promotion like it, it seems like it was a secret that they wanted to keep from us for a long time but now they're realizing the cast out of the bag so now it's at walmart you know uh <laughs> but not because for a lot the thing is they can't really patent it because you can make well, it yourself so i think that's why they me. never wanted anybody to know about it but i have yeah you can make it yourself for pennies on the dollar but mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you guys this very serious question ben i want your best answer on this sister uh angel as well Weren't you guys worried about turning blue? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. The Smurf. Uh, yeah. You, we, that's the I rumor. think we should tell people about info. that. So because if they start to research it, you know. Yeah, that's a that's good point. That's one of yeah. the first articles yep. that comes up. Yeah, Colin right. Silver, if you guys are not aware, uh, 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 there's a guy who was on like talk show around, like probably back in the days of Phil Donahue. <laughs> um, right. That he was taking – a colloidal silver and he turned literally Way turned blue much. yeah he turned yeah, he turned blue and um not only was he taking too much but he made it in such a way that no you have to ask for that okay so he was yeah. he was trying to he was trying to so i use a silver lungs product and it takes about a couple hours to make it but you can make like two liters of of of, of it and um 
And also, too, there's a certain bottle type that will block the UV rays and it, so it lasts longer. That's one thing. But, yeah, so this guy was trying to make it so quickly. He was trying to accelerate. The, he didn't want to wait two hours to make it. So I think he was putting, like, a, a aluminum or a ammonia or something in his formula. It would make it a lot faster, but the byproduct is it would make it blue. So, um, again, no one – you if you make it, like, with a, a kit, um, you're not going to turn blue. Even if you buy off the shelf, you're not going to turn blue. This guy was taking a formula that he was making himself, and he put something in it to catalyze. Hey, he was drinking a lot of it. I, yeah, I thought yeah. Too. I thought it was too. Yeah, yeah and that's like that's one of these hit pieces that they've released. That's like the that's like the biggest propaganda against it. Just like yeah. with distilled water, distilled yes. water. If you Google yes. that, you'll find. The World Health Organization doesn't want you drinking distilled water. That should tell you something, because they released uh, mm. they released a, 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 a bogus like uh, warning, like some, some like article <laughs> or whatever, saying that it will that it'll kill you because it'll bleach all the minerals from your body, and right. that should just Early... be your number one indication that you want to drink it because they don't want yeah. you to. Right? Yeah, the first article that comes up, well, it used to. I think it's fallen down to about fourth or fifth now, but. If you Google it, it still might be number one. I don't use Google. So it's early death comes from drinking distilled water. Exactly. And you, yeah. They want to scare you to death. Ah, you're going to die. Well, if you re okay, I want to ask yourself. Now, if you research it, first of all, the Bible talks about how the Lord takes the water up and distills it. See, when I saw that scripture, I ignored them. Because the Lord ain't going to give me nothing that's going to harm me. And if distillation is good enough for him, it's good enough yeah. for me. But uh, how is early death going to come from drinking pure? I want you to think about this now. Pure H2O. I mean, yeah, you could if you drown in it. But this is what they uh, they try to do. This. They want people not to think. And if the first thing that they do to keep you from being able to think is to instill fear. Yeah, it's and that and that is user. yeah, and then that's another that was another big health uh, uh, miracle for me was discovering distilled water because um, now just to quickly explain the minerals that they say you need to have in your water, uh, they essentially turn your body into a Brita filter because you don't right. process inorganic minerals. So right. so uh, you uh, you want your water to be hungry water is what they uh, how uh, one of these uh, doctors explained it. Uh, where they have a, 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 all this available, um, like bonding room, where they haven't already the H2O hasn't bonded with these waste products and minerals already, to where it doesn't really um, uh, 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 act as a solvent in your body. Um, what you right. want it to do is you want it to be just pure H2O, to where it has all these because that's what water is is the greatest solvent. So it's going to take out um, the, these waste products, which is what it's supposed to do, and and, and um, ex excess minerals and all that stuff. In your body, which is why it's actually a really great treatment for cataracts, and um, okay. uh, because uh, that, that's yeah, because that's actually like a buildup of um, uh, 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 I don't know if it's like minerals or something. There's some type of buildup, mm -hmm. um, and it'll it, you know it, it's it's actually all over your body, but it, you'll see it in your eye, and that's where that's where it'll uh, you know that become yeah, a problem. Yeah, getting really cloudy. Yes, yes, and that and they want to do that. surgery to uh -huh. fix that. Right. And actually, I've even heard that doctors um, have used it as a last ditch effort, a prescription of two gallons of distilled water a day for, for people that were terminal for cancer. Um, mm -hmm. And and see, here's the thing. People are like, oh, no, that's just big distilled waters propaganda. No, there's no big distilled water <laughs> industry. That, that's the cheapest <laughs> water you can buy. It's the cheapest water you can buy. A lot of people think you're not supposed yeah. to even drink it. And we use it in our machines and our, our humidifiers and stuff. Uh, uh, right. But uh, to keep and, and the that, sediment from building up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But we want that sediment in our body. Have you seen what regular water will do? Even I have well water, but man, there's so many dissolved solids in the well water. Uh, it, it's crazy. Have you seen it? When you try to use that in your humidifier, it won't be a, you know, pretty sparkly clean humidifier for very long. And, you know, you'll go through the filters uh, <laughs> over and over again. Um, and, and people think they want that in their body. But um, for me, uh, I know that uh, uh, I don't usually like to drink water because I always would just taste things in it. But distilled mm -hmm. water, once you start drinking it, it, it you don't want to drink it. Like, you can't even drink other water because it, it tastes funky. Like, e even the yes. bottled stuff. Is and also, distillation is the only way to actually remove fluoride. So when you get distilled water, yeah, yes, you uh, know that yes. it's not, it doesn't have fluoride. 
anything else is you can't, you, uh, like even if it's bottled or whatever, there can be fluoride in it. What about right, minerals? reverse um, osmosis? Uh, is like the second best water you can drink. It it removes removes about ninety eight percent of the contaminants, but the still uh, steam dil distillation is about the only way you can remove one hundred percent of the contaminants. Or uh, I know uh, people are always concerned. I I don't know um, if the concern is necessarily rational, particularly when the water is probably getting cycled through pretty quickly. But I have a TDS meter that I use. And if I do decide not to make my own because it does take several hours, uh, and if I do go purchase a few gallons, I will um, test the water. And every single time in the last 10 years that I've been doing this, I have never had one bottle of distilled water ever read anything on that meter other than zero 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 never oh and so, so you make your own you make, how do you make oh yeah i have my own distiller I, 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 I heard those are expensive <laughs> well they can they be uh mm -hmm. one, one of the tricks that i did was i went and researched what the best unit was i actually did purchase that one new uh, because I, I really wanted a good one. I was working at the time. I had the money to do it. Uh, later on, when things got a little lean, I wanted to get one for my mom. So I went and found the same model used in excellent condition on eBay for half the price. In fact, wow. almost maybe 40%, roughly 40% of the price. So that you know, if you do your research and you research the different models and watch some different videos about people's demonstrations on them, you guys will see how they have this contaminant. In fact, do a, do a research or just do a little search on how to clean a water distiller. The reason I want you to do that is so you can see the crud that's mm -hmm. left in that, um, what do they call it, the uh, pot of the, the distillation unit all of the nasty, ugly, gooey crud that's in there. And it's like I heard one doctor say many years ago, he said, either you you use a filter or you are the filter. So, you yeah. know, there are some really good water filters out there. You can research them. I think Zero Water is actually pretty good. I mean, they actually, in a lot of their kits, give you the TDS meter to test the water. And if the filter is, you know, within their life cycle, they're very good at removing the contaminants. I mean, you can start there. But, um, and there's videos you can watch right here on YouTube with their demonstrations. I also have a video uh, that's about a half hour long on my channel that uh, the gentleman shows you the different water types and why yes. you want to choose distilled water. And it's a very yeah, good 30 minutes. Too. You'll learn and you'll see. The, the, the difference is literally clear. It will, it will be before your eyes why you should drink it. And I want to mention one other thing about distilled water, which is there is it's a half truth when they say that distilled water will leach minerals from the body. It does. But what they don't tell you is it leaches inorganic minerals yeah. from the body. That's minerals your body could not take up into the cell and is literally sitting there as a toxin, creating inflammation and doing other stuff like attacking your joints and stuff, getting in there and, and messing up the works. Distilled water, because as Sister uh, Angel was saying, it is a hungry water, it's empty. So it's able to go in and pick up particulates and remove it from your system. And they don't want, hey, they've spent a lot of money and time trying to contaminate us with the yeah. chemtrails they've been spraying. Do you know, I found out recently that I, they're spraying barium and aluminum, and some people claiming they're spraying blood as well. Yeah, but do you, but yeah, do you, yeah. Yes, the symbols for barium uh, and aluminum for barium is BA, for aluminum is AL, put it together, you have Bale or Bale. Uh, Y'all, can, yeah. we can't make this stuff up. Right, and I remember the blood thing, too, because um, that was the very first conspiracy theory that I actually came across and, and believed in because I was in Florida totally dead asleep at the time. But and I didn't even realize it was a conspiracy theory or I probably would have been like, nope, not looking. But um, I saw the chemtrails. I knew they were spraying chemtrails because I don't care what anybody says. I lived in Key West, Florida all my life. And there's a whole bunch of bases there and, you know, two different airports, a bunch of military bases. And I loved watching contrails form um, in the sky. But the thing was, they never like I always just think it would be cool if they lasted. Like they would last and stretch mm. across the sky, but they'd always, you know, I, I remember as a kid watching them disappear within like a certain distance from the, the actual aircraft. 
And, um, but by the way, I could always see the aircraft that they were coming from too, by the way, which uh, is very odd how you can't see the aircraft that the you know, chemtrails are coming from. Um, and um, mm. I, uh, I, I looked into it and I found not only were they finding, you know, these chemicals uh, uh, in the, uh, after the chemtrails would be sprayed, they find it in the water and stuff, but they were finding red blood cells, erythrocytes. Um, and, uh, I remember I couldn't even process that. I didn't even know what I, I like, cause I, I, I hadn't stepped into the world yet where I realized that, you know, the governments were literally pure evil <laughs> and that, you know, I couldn't even fathom the type of things they were doing to us. But I remember it just put, took me, you know, spun me for a loop trying to figure out why they would be, you know, putting red blood cells in the, in the chemtrails. And I still don't really know what that could possibly be about, but I will say this now, as crazy as this sounds, and I wasn't, you know, will, I wasn't eager to go down this road with chemtrails because, um, mm. uh, you know, I, I try not to get too off the deep end or, to, you know, get too, what they call it, into the woo. But um, I was driving <laughs> down from here to Louisville, uh, like last year. I live about 45 minutes from Louisville. I love Louisville, by the way. Nicest people in the entire country in Louisville. I, I promise you, they are the best, like Louisville, go there. Everybody's amazing. They're just the best people there. All of but, Kentucky. Um, uh, I was, yeah, I love Kentucky. It's just, I love it. I, I live you. just a few, well, a little, little, little bit over the state line, but I, I, I would love to move to Kentucky because it's just those people are incredible. And um, I, I don't care what neighborhood you go to, just the friendliest, the best people in the world. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, I, I was there driving. For two years. You, you did. Okay. So you, you I'm, I love that you can vouch for that. Yeah. I've even saw online that they're voted the friendliest uh, state. In the you know people say it like this the friendliest city to visit friendly state um that, that they have a reputation but um anyway uh i was driving and i looked up in the sky and they were spraying chemtrails but this time uh it was pentagrams all across the sky Whoa. i wish i had been able Whoa. to get my phone yeah and here's the really weird thing um i looked really closely and i had noticed this before but i had thought maybe they were just so high up i couldn't see the plane and there were some weird videos on YouTube where it's actually like an orb that's like a, like a weird ethereal looking orb that's actually uh, spraying these chemtrails. Now, it could be cloaking. It could be cloaking technology, which is making things look funny. But the really weird thing was I began praying against them. I prayed because it was pentagrams mm. all across the sky as far as I could see. And um, it was very clear. It wasn't like, oh, kind of making out a pentagram. No, it was pentagrams. And um, uh, I was listening to uh, worship music. And I was uh, crying uh, because I was so angry. <laughs> I was really angry seeing this. And uh, I was like praying and just uh, praising God. And I saw these things starting to sputter out. Like it was like going from a solid line to a dotted line. And then they would disappear. Um, uh, and I, it, and uh, so I, I tested it again where I would see, because I rarely see chemtrails over my property. Um, it does happen. And I, uh, by the way, I've, I've timed it. You can bet in about 36 hours, within 36 hours, there will be a, a storm, you know, rain. So, you know, th it'll go from sunny to just gray uh, and cloudy, uh, you know, and it's like, you know, pure sunny forecast. Um, but um, I, uh, I, I, I've tested it multiple times now, and I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, praying against them has some effect, which makes me really wonder what they are. I really don't know what they are, and it's kind of weird. Because um, I have not actually seen a real looking plane. Now that I look, when I look really closely, I've never actually seen like a, a clear as day plane spraying these things. It's always like it, <laughs> they remind me of the 9 11 planes, honestly. When, when I watch those planes on video, they always creep me out. They creeped me out even before I knew about the alternative explanations for the planes that day. Um, they, the planes were spot that something about them was very eerie to me. And, um, but they look, they, they, it's like when I see like a vague outline of a plane, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't right. look, um, it, it looks like it's like not it's far away enough to be. Yeah, that. it's ghost like. It looks like a ghost. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and like I said, it seems to make perfect sense. No, it's just a regular plane that's spraying chemicals. And that's where I want to be. I want to be there. I don't want to be off in weird, crazy lady land. But there's something else up with these things. And we know that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. We know that's the second heaven. So what's to say there couldn't be something spiritual that is pretending to be a plane that's actually doing this? I mean, what, mm. what, what, what I, I really wonder about that because I don't understand, it, you know, it, 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 it's not, it's, it, it's not normal. Uh, it's not, it's not just nuts and bolts, you know, 
uh, you know, just regular old aircraft, you know, passenger jets or whatever, spraying these things, whatever it is. I don't know. They might have cloaking technology, like I said, but um, uh, I, I try it, try praying against them and see what happens. It's, they shouldn't, <laughs> it shouldn't be, I mean, obviously, yes, we can, you know, move mountains, uh, That's you know, first with prayer and with, go on, Ben, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, you, you mentioned blood in them. I never heard of that. That's crazy. But I, I immediately thought of, and this is a Steven Spielberg f- film, of course. It's uh, War of the Worlds, where they they were yes. spraying, they were uh, devouring people, terraforming. Yes, yeah, so they're spraying blood everywhere. You know, it's like what? Yes, is that some kind of hint or something? You know, I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Yes, that's true. Yes, it was. Um, I the, missed the War that. Of the I, I've seen that movie a couple of times, and I did not see that they were spraying blood. I might have oh, yeah. saw that they were spraying something. Oh, yeah. but, wow. Yeah, and I, I still don't remember what the explanation was. Spiritualized. <laughs> yes, because because now that I think about it, I know that the thing that was supposed to that got them in the end was they didn't have any. I guess what was it? They didn't have resistance to our our pathogens, uh, like our bacteria. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But what would spring blood do to fix that? I don't remember what the explanation Corona was. Corona the got blood. them too. Corona. Well, the, the blood. I. The, <laughs> it was like a blood, and then from the blood, it would allow like the organism to spread. Uh, like a vein structure. Oh, I don't okay. Know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it. Yeah, I, I haven't put it together. It reminds but. me of that Stranger Things too. Stranger Things, where, where they, you know, when they go into the upside down, or when the upside down was spread into the to our reality, it was like like these veins and like this uh, look, you know, kind of it looked like you know tissue and like almost like there's like this um, um biological quality to to uh, spiritual wickedness or something, you know, because I found right. a lot of like revelations just through the things they show to us in stranger things um well um don't isn't and victoria mentioned this black goo black goo i've never figured out exactly yes. what that is but it, that's a common theme as well i'm not sure what it, it what is. is yeah, yeah they're, that's, either, that's, they're either talking about black goo or black holes or dark mm. matter dark matter mm. exactly yeah. dark, which which is like uh, covid-19 is like the dark matter of of uh, epidemiology because it's just like they had to create dark matter to explain a, a hole in their uh in their uh their model right right so uh, <laughs> uh and, and so they just decided they just it's just the most ridiculous thing when you really think about it uh because they they could their model didn't make sense so they just decided there was this invisible material that had all this weight they tried to just like just it's literally just patching a hole in an equation that you think you know, that you didn't do right and um because it's all nonsense but uh but yeah um uh i uh uh I don't know with the black goo, like, I think there's a lot of disinformation with it because, you know, they'll they start going down the alien route and like, you know, sentient uh, uh, programmable matter and all that stuff. And I, I tend to look at it a lot like, um, like it could be something to do with like, there could be a correlation with ectoplasm because the, I, I do believe ectoplasm is, uh, is real. Like when, when people are think people are trying to study, uh, paranormal you know paranormal mm-hmm. researchers and stuff ectoplasm has been reported as a as a phenomenon in you know related to hauntings for a long time i don't think that they just uh that that's just bs i think that's true and i'd like to know what that could be you know but it, it seems to be like some type of actual material residue well and a lot of these which i know all haunting is demonic um mm-hmm. uh but uh a lot of these demonic hauntings will uh result you know they'll they'll, they'll, they'll there will be something like blood that will come out of the like you know faucets or there they, you know there's like this this it seems like there's almost this ability to manifest this type of substance that looks like you know like blood and um uh and other weird fluids so i do wonder if it's just like if what we consider ectoplasm and there's some type of i don't know like i said like biological component to spiritual wickedness i don't really know how else to put it um, but, uh, uh, you know, I have heard some people say with the chemtrails that they feel that, uh, that they're actually, and I don't know why they would have to do it this way. This doesn't really make sense to me. Like, you know, why, like, so Satan, like say you want to disperse demons over an area. Why would he have to do it in the form of like masquerading as a plane spraying him? I don't really understand that, but I, there's a lot we don't understand about how they, how this, you know, that realm works. And I, you know, and I, I do tend to think that it's a lot more, um, like we think of it all as like, you know, it's all very spiritual. And, and so there's not really any like, you know, 
people almost like you know they can do anything they want to do and they don't have to do anything pragmatic but there's probably like just like we have physical laws that dictate what we can and can't do and how we you know we can't just walk through walls and and do whatever we want and just you know if we want to pour a glass of water we actually have to get the pitcher out and pour it into the glass we can't just you know ma- magic it into the glass maybe they have to do things a certain way too you know um and we just don't really understand it uh and i do i tend to think that a lot of the reason why you know uh the powers that be are they always seem to be so many steps ahead of us um is that they do understand uh a lot of that a lot of that stuff and a lot of, like a lot more of the spiritual realm uh that uh uh, that has so much to do with uh, uh, this world and that we don't really see or understand or realize. But, they, they, you know, if you see enough of their, their movies and their TV shows, they, they drop hints everywhere, you know? And so, I yeah, but uh, it sounds pretty crazy, but uh, I don't know. Nowadays, you know, I think the crazier it sounds, the more true it might be. Well, that actually we slid right on into our next topic for this evening, which is spiritual attacks or spiritual warfare. Ah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, I think as sister angel, you, I was talking to you. Um, I, I sent you some information about uh, what are called psychic attacks. And uh, I, I had never really thought about that before. Um, at least not with any particular level of, of clarity. Maybe I thought about it for a moment. And it seems like when you get on something, the devil will actually try to like scramble your thoughts by directing you in another direction and cause you to yep. forget maybe something the Lord was trying to show you for, for a yep. moment for you to yep. investigate further. Get distracted. Because I know, yep. Yes. To get distracted on something else. And, uh, I have this is brother that I like listening to named R.E. Dossett, who talks about a lot of different spiritual uh, things and how to examine the context. Uh, I think we forget sometimes that for, and this is one thing he talks about, which is if something has manifested in the natural, it started in the spiritual realm first. And the Lord may have even, whether it was uh, a dream or something you were able to perceive in your your natural understanding showed you there was a storm arising, but you didn't speak against it, and you didn't curse and decree in Jesus' name that it will not come to be, and declare that thing to wither and die like Jesus did to the fig tree. And um, the other is that attacks can happen to you where you get this shooting pain in your body, you shouldn't just be like, oh, what was that? Oh, that was hard. Oh, that hurt. You should rebuke that thing and cast it off of you in the name of Jesus because it is actually a spiritual attack. One of the devil's fiery darts that he's shooting, one of his witches, right at your physical body. And yeah. uh, I, well, I sent you some information about that, sister. And you told me something when you want to share it with the audience. Yeah, yeah, right. Like like a day or two after you told me about that, um, I got a uh, a really sharp pain, uh, like out of nowhere in a in a weird place that wasn't, you know, something like familiar or you know normal. And um, I, I I I rebuked it right away, and it went away as soon as I did, like right as soon as I did. And uh, uh, I have I, I thought back, and I realized I've had those before. Um, and uh, like I know there was one that happened in the last year that was like pretty scary. Because, you know, when you get a weird shooting sharp pain that, like, is you don't understand what it is. Like, I, the first thought is, like, I don't know, aneurysm or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and I and I had wondered, you know, if, if there might be something to it, you know. And so, so far, obviously, it's only happened the one time. But, uh, uh, the, you know, that I've actually tried that. Um, people could say confirmation bias. But, uh, uh, you know, I think that that's absolutely – I know that they do things like this because, you know um, – like, I, like I've mentioned before, my friend, you know, that grew up in the, uh, of, you know, Luciferian family, her mm-hmm. mom's like a high witch, and uh, they do have the ability to affect your physical body. Now, in, in the case that I know of, um, her uh, her mother, uh, so that her boyfriend, she was dating um, this guy, and uh, he had a, a, his father was very, very sick, and, and he was dying of cancer, and um, her mother actually performed like a spell where she withdrew like health and vitality from her little brother. And he was, you know, like 
12 or something at the time. He got a little sick and sent it to the, her boyfriend's father. And he went for like three months. Like he like, like it was like, he was kind of in remission. Like he actually was able to get up and walk around and, um, and, uh, 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 you know, of course she didn't take it from herself. She took it from her own son. Let's tell you what kind of mom she is. Um, but, uh, but, but she did that. And I mean, it really did, uh, it, it did, you know, kind of give this guy, you know, at least a reprieve. I mean, he did end up dying. Uh, but not, not that I'm endorsing witchcraft, but my point is that they can affect, you know, your physical body. And um, there's always a price though, right? So in this case, she was doing something positive, but she had to, um, she had to, to take it, uh, to withdraw it from, uh, you know, it's probably some, you know, demonic deception, really, because I don't think she could actually literally withdraw health from her i don't think god would allow i don't think we're you know we're, we're, we are that would be a little too big for our britches but um there's you know some sort of spiritual agreement took place where she was you know she somehow sent some sort of energy from her son and took it from him and he got sick and sent it to this and if she wasn't like she didn't lay hands on him or anything she was you know at her house but so i know that they this so is they can do that imagine what they can do negatively uh, which I'm sure that's, that's the bread and butter uh, is yeah. to affect you negatively. Did you say, Angel, that you think they had something to affect your memory? Oh, yes. Oh, I also, yes. I, I know that um, that when I was um, 11, it, yeah, I think it was like 11, 12, she, um, uh, and my friend had, you know, she told me that she was, uh, she told me she was under MK Alter. She didn't use those words. She told me that she could tell me I could use certain words um, that would, uh, if I said these certain words, she would, I'd be able to make her do whatever I wanted. And I didn't know, I thought she was joking, whatever. Um, I was playing a game, I thought. Uh, and if she had said mind control, I might have known what she meant, but she didn't say those words. But that's what she was talking about. And so, anyway, basically, uh, long story short, her mom, uh, like, like, uh, like we were on the phone when she told me this. And I, 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 I used the words she told me. And so I told her to do something. And um, I had no way of knowing if she was doing it or not. So I called her mom's line upstairs and I told her mom, who I had always had a great relationship with. I thought, you know, she's nice to me and stuff, told her what, what she told me. And um, uh, and I thought I busted her. Right. Like I was like, oh, she's going to, you know, oh, can you believe what she told me? It's so ridiculous. That's not true. Right. And I bet she's sitting on the couch just waiting for the time to pass until she's going to come back and say, oh, yeah, I went and did that. Yeah, it, it totally worked. And her mom instead, like she started screaming at me and, and, I, and it was, she was furious and I had never heard her talk like this and I didn't understand what was going on. And I just remember her yelling at me and me being horrified. Nobody, nobody's parents had ever been mad at me at that point. And, um, uh, I, uh, I, I don't remember anything after that. Um, it was like, she took the memory from me, um, because I did not remember that until, 2016 when I had found out and it was 2015 late 2015 so this was happened when I was 11 and um in 2015 when I had pieced together everything with finding out about the occult and SRA and all this stuff and realizing that that's what my friend's family was and that that was what was wrong with my friend um uh I, I didn't I still didn't remember that she told me this so I was still just suspecting that she was under mind control and that there was all the, you know, all this stuff. But then once we started, to, you know, talking about it and she had her programming was compromised by certain questions I asked. So she was revealing information to me. You know, she reminded me that she told me this when we were kids. And it was not like somebody suggesting a memory to me. And then suddenly I think it's my own. No, it was my memory. I remember it clear as day. I would have never in my life forgotten this. This was like t horrifying to me because I can remember how I felt as she was yelling at me and I was so confused, <laughs> so confused. I didn't know what I did wrong, but she cast a spell on me that made me not remember that. That was the only thing she could do because the cat was out of the bag. J you know, Jalen had told me the big thing that, you know, that was never supposed to get out. And, um, and I didn't know what she told me. So really she probably could have just not done that. And I wouldn't have really known any better, but, um, but she knew I was a curious person, so she knew I should, but I probably would have figured it out. And so she cast a spell on me that cloaked my memory. It was like wow, a cloaking you know, spell. I was telling Sister Renee just the other day, I was asking her about a particular 
uh, I thought was a dream and then we ended up determining, which was my suspicion. But at first I was thinking it was a dream, but then I started thinking, no, it was actually more spiritual warfare that just came in the form of a dream. And I really don't really want to go into the details, but the one exception I, I will say is at the end of the, the experience, when I woke up, uh, I wanted to remember what had transpired, but there was this absolute, just the heaviest sleepiness I've ever felt in my life came on me in the middle of trying to wake up. It was like it would not let me wake up. And it was like the Lord spoke to my spirit at that moment and said, say everything you just experienced out loud so you'll be able to remember it. So literally while I'm rolling over trying not to go back to sleep, I'm literally trying to get up and I kind of just I couldn't do anything but go back to sleep. I start saying the things that had transpired in this experience out loud, and I was able to remember every detail. And and that was real. That really kind of tripped me out because what exactly what you're saying on how? Okay, you remember in the movie? I'm gonna go. They put truth in the movies and lies in the news, as we've witnessed. Uh, Men in Black, where they would hold up that little thing and make people forget their entire experience. Mm-hmm. It was like that. I, you know, um, that was trying to make me do that. And thankfully, when the Lord interjected, so I could realize I was actually engaged in spiritual warfare to examine that further. um, This heaviness came over me to try to make me forget everything I had just experienced. Yeah. And and what I realized is that because when she told me, reminded me about it, it wasn't like like it, it was like the memory had always been there, but the, what they did was they, they, they put like a fog, a veil over it. Mm-hmm. And it was like this fog lifting or this, this veil lifting. And I had access to that memory again and it like popped right back into place. So it wasn't like haze or anything. It was like, oh, you know, and I couldn't believe it. Like I'm telling you, I would not ever, ever in my life have forgotten it, but I didn't just forget it over time. Like I forgot it that very second because I never thought about it further. And this is something I would have thought about because it was weird and we were very close and, um, and she didn't play pranks. So even though at first I thought it had to be a prank she was playing, that does, does she, I would play pranks. She didn't do like pull pranks on me. So I would have ruminated over it and been like, I'm very curious. And I would have dug and dug and dug. And, and instead I, that memory was just sealed off. And so what I realized is that they can't actually take memories. All they can do is cover them up. Speaking the memories of, are yours. What's interesting, both of you guys mentioned uh, a common component, which is memory. And one of the things that I, I recently was undergoing, I feel was a spiritual attack, was, um, you know, my job requires, well, I, I maintain weird hours anyways, because I'm kind of a night owl, and I know I, I, I'm, my mind is always going, so it's hard for me to sleep sometimes. And so I, uh, but certain times I need to be up at a certain time, so I'll take, I started taking sleeping pills to help regulate or, uh, you know, try to put to, to basically, uh, you know, force myself into some form of schedule and uh, prescription. No, that just off the shelf, uh, off oh, okay. the shelf stuff. And, okay. um, and what, and so I started, I, you know, I, I started, I started getting kind of developing a bad habit of taking them. And, and it was to the point where I would, for, it, it started messing with my memory. Uh, and I would forget that I had just taken one. And uh, I believe Satan was trying to kill me that way. Um, in fact, what what was going on is that uh, this is about a year ago. I was under uh, uh, I was going uh, basically popping those pills and uh, forgetting that I took one before, and they would just sneak up on you. And I and all, all this all of a sudden out of the blue, I felt like I, I you know I was I was up at night and I couldn't sleep. To go oh, okay, I'm gonna watch a movie. And so I watched for whatever reason I never heard seen this movie before. But it's uh, uh, Spotless Mind of the Oh Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And if you know mm-hmm. about that movie, it's about a guy trying to recover his memory. Um, and I believe it was basically Satan trying to, you know, just mocking me uh, and saying, yeah, I'm killing uh, you. And uh, it, it was right in my face. That's how it manifested for me. But what I thought was interesting uh, is that memory was a common component in uh, all of ours. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I um, think that's a big thing. <laughs> wow. So it seemed that the devil also, he wants to attack you, you know, because if you think about it, what if the Lord sends you a dream about he's going to bless you with something or he's going to answer some crisis that is in your life? You dreamed about it. And before you wake up, the devil has, has uh, stolen that dream from you where you don't even remember it. Right. Yeah. yeah I should mention, too, yeah. that I, when I was taking those pills, uh, 
I forget to take them, and then all of a sudden they hit me at once. And and there were time, there were multiple times where I was up and I couldn't think straight, and it, it was like it was it was like being in hell. I couldn't think straight, I couldn't re- retain a thought, but all I knew was that I had to keep on walking and move around, or I was going to die because my body was going to shut down. I mean, it was terrifying. What can I uh, ask? What they are? Because I didn't know what yeah. over counter pill would like. Cause uh, that type of well, if you take enough of them, it'll do it. Uh, what's they called? Um, the do you remember the main Unisom. Oh, you know, okay. Unisom. That's yep. a, I feel, yeah. I, it's, you a know, I pill, it's a blue pill, by the way. It's a blue pill. Yeah, I, uh, but yeah, they color code their pills. I, I, uh, I, I definitely, I was like kind of addicted to those, um, in like, like my te- late teens, early twenties, because I have always been afraid to sleep because I had uh, sleep paralysis a, a lot as a kid and it, wow. it you know, messed me up. Uh, be, and uh, so I, to sleep alone, I had to knock myself out with Unisom. And I, I, I think that that's like the devil's playground where you take too much diphenhydramine because it is a terrible feeling. Um, uh, now I do, I, I, at least I thought, now I, I think that I've maybe heard conflicting things about it, but from what I understood, at least it, it, it was difficult to overdose on it. Oh, Actually, no, not can, for me. I think I had done that. Well, that's what I was going to say. Cause it, people... like it loses its effect after a while. Some people's tolerance levels to certain substances are, are very, very different. Yeah, I was taking max yeah, of strength. Yeah. I was popping them one after the other. I was forgetting I was taking it. I was like popping them like M&Ms, you know. Um, oh, and wow. you're real disoriented. Dis- yeah. It disorients you really bad. And it gets to a point, for me, it got to where it didn't make me sleep. So I would just take it and then I'd be really disoriented. And it was like a very like anxious feeling. Yes. Um, this is really um, panic kind of attack. weird to me. It was a panic attack, basically. Yeah, it's yes. really weird to me that you guys are all saying because I did take Unisom for like a brief period of time, um, probably in my late teens, where I was having trouble sleeping too. And I think my mom picked it picked it up for me, and I probably took it for maybe every night for like a month or two, and then I started having trouble sleeping as well. And so I just discontinued it because I was like, if it, if it's not helping me sleep, then there's there's no reason for me to continue to take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it gets it, like, I, I don't know, for me, like I, I first started taking it in the form of Tylenol PM when I was uh, and Benadryl when I was uh, uh, in, like, like in my early teens, when I first I, I got really tired of sleeping with my granny because it was embarrassing because I was, you know, I was just turned 13 and I knew that was embarrassing. So I tried I wanted to sleep in my room, but it was very, very hard and um, to sleep alone. And um, not just because I would get scared of like demons, literally. Uh, but because I get, I, I start thinking about people I love dying and all this stuff. So I just want to knock myself out. But um, um, I, uh, I think it began what it ended up being me getting addicted to painkillers because um, uh, I had, I was very anti-drug. I, I never, I, I oh man, I was like the worst little Nazi. Like I'd spray my stepbrother with the hose when he and his friends were smoking weed behind the house. <laughs> I, was like, I, I, I was terrible. I was like the little dare kid, right? And I was very adamant about this, but I didn't really think about the pills being a drug. And um, and so I, I, I do believe that uh, uh, once I was in, like, I was like 14, I, I remember so I started taking them in the daytime just to mess myself up. And I, when I would get really anxious and I get panic attacks and I, 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 I didn't realize that I was tr- really trying to get high. I just thought I was trying to keep myself from having these panic attacks. And it was terrible to take them in the daytime, but... Um, um, eventually, like within a, a couple years, uh, you know, I got uh, prescribed Loraset for man, the doctor wouldn't be it, uh, for like hip. I had like some type of hip pain, like phlebitis is what they call it. And he like put me on Loraset. Ridiculous. Um, and uh, I was, you know, I was, I was a minor still. And, um, but that, that, you know, that was, that was it because I was, that that when I had those, I, I didn't have any of this anxiety. I wasn't thinking about my mom dying. I, and so I and I didn't think of it as a drug. Right. I didn't I, I just I know that that's dumb. But at the time, it was like a bit before, you know, this huge explosion of everybody taking these pharmaceuticals. So to me, I didn't think it was. Plus, I always thought of a drug as something that like made you like a different person, like where, you know, where you drink and you get like, you turn into a different person or even when you smoke weed, you turn into, you know, it's really messed. Like you're, you're slower and everything with these opioids. They didn't really do that. It was sort of like, like for me, at least it was sort of like an enhancement. Like that's how it felt because um, uh, it made me euphoric, but it didn't make me like where I couldn't talk normal or where I wasn't, you know, 
like I didn't have my faculties about me. It just made me like feel like all this energy and euphoria. And so I didn't think that it was doing the thing I thought drugs did, which make you stupid. But so that's the date. I just think that's a real dangerous thing. Um, even with these over the counter drugs that, you know, we can, especially, you know, you know, with kids taking them and stuff, uh, it, it, once you get used to altering your state, that's all it is. So that's, that, that, that's the difference. That was the threshold I crossed, you know, um, uh, it wasn't that I wanted to get, I didn't think I wanted to get higher or party. I never was like that, but just, just, just the going from never altering your state of consciousness to altering it. That's just like, it's like, there's no going back. Because once you become accustomed to that or comfortable with it, it's very hard to, I mean, you can get off of it and stuff, but I'm saying that, <laughs> that there's, there's, it's sort of just like a, a line you cross. It's very hard to uncross because before you do it, you're terrified of doing it and you feel like you're giving up control. But then once you become used to it, you're comfortable with it. And, um, and so, you know, I think that's one of the, you know, it's a, it's a physical manifestation of spiritual warfare today where almost everybody is you know oh, yeah. almost the default state is some form of altered consciousness and uh uh you know i know that it, it definitely weakens you right, uh exactly. and I, I don't personally think it op- like it could open portals maybe god just protected me i've heard a lot of people say oh no you know it opens portals to even demonic possession but man i was full on like you know hated christianity hated the bible and god probably just protected me out of his mercy because i would be so terrified if something like this happened but i never had any type of demonic experience when i was taking any type of drug this never happened well, to me for even me, when i get I, acid I, I haven't done Guys, a lot could, of drugs go ahead could i interrupt you just sure. for a minute let's put a pin in this for a second yep. we have a sister that's in the chat tonight that's having a struggle with regard to her faith and some confusion in her life and she's oh, not yeah. at peace and uh sister anna i'm not we're not trying to call you out sister we're just going to get in agreement with you right now and we're going to bind the devil that's coming against you right now in the name of jesus so i want to say a prayer for her father we come before you right now in the name of jesus on behalf of anna fox lord and she has concerns concerning her faith lord and hearing the true gospel and understanding the true gospel lord and right now she knows she's saved lord but we want you to bring her your peace lord your undisturbed composure which is your promise according to the scripture because you said lord you said my peace i leave you my peace i give you not as the world has peace but your peace, your special peace, Lord. And we thank you for that right now, that you will calm her heart and her mind and that she will know that she has been established in you, that she stands firmly within the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, protected, received, and accepted in the beloved, which is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the rock of ages, and that there is no shadow of turning in you, that she cannot, in any wise be cast out, that she is in your hand and the Father's hand, and that you have received her and she is covered and sealed into the day of redemption by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you right now, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, for bringing her that peace. Settle her in her spirit and let her, Lord, give her the wisdom to be able to discern the true gospel from the false gospel. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, absolutely. Lord, I pray you just send her the peace that you sent me that day in the hammock. You know the day, Lord, where I was uh, doubting and I, I, I just was overcome with fear and uh, uh, just the, the worst sense of hopelessness. And there was it was it was almost like a, a I almost felt like I had been drugged all of a sudden. I felt this incredible calm come over me. And this was before I was saved. This was before it was leading, right leading up to it. But I know it was it was the Lord because I I looked up and I I asked if you know God if He was out there to help me because I just I couldn't explain it. It was just this feeling that came over me. And um, you know, Lord, I pray you could just uh, give her that that peace because uh, that was a big step in me actually realizing there was somebody out there listening because it was it was it was supernatural it was it was all of a sudden and it was uh the most comforting feeling and now i have that every day every time i i think what's the worst that could happen when i'm worried about something and i remember that uh you know uh god guarantees us a happy ending 
the happiest Amen. possible ending. That's the most comforting thing. Uh, the, the only thing we have to worry about is uh, uh, really uh, just uh, getting, you know, from point A to point B. But we know point B is going to be uh, when, you know, the Lord wipes away every tear and there will be no suffering anymore and we'll be with him eternally. And uh, even if we can't understand that or fathom it, um, just, you know, anytime I, I get nervous or whatever, I think back to, to how I used to feel when I didn't believe in anything and the, the incredible pit of despair that awaited us just on the other side of the unknown, you know, when we don't believe and we don't mm -hmm. know what's out there. And even if we don't believe the right gospel, um, because we don't really know what our fate is and we look around and everything that we're doing and everything that we cherish and everything that we love, you know, might ultimately just turn to dust and have absolutely no meaning. And even if we think that there is a God and, um, and you know, that even the Bible is true, if we don't have a guarantee that we can know our fate, then life really is the cruelest uh, uh, joke imaginable because it really if you don't know for sure that uh, that you're going to that, that that you're going to that you're going to be okay no matter what happens, and that this this that this life that you've built and these people that you love that it does that it means something to God Himself, and that you know He's right there with you, and then it's not going to be some meaningless exercise in futility that you just go into the ground and everybody forgets about you eventually. Um, then it really is. Uh, hard to draw another breath when you don't have that assurance. And it's just amazing when you think about the assurance we have in Christ, knowing that uh, that's the most important thing he can promise us, you know, because God knows how scary that is. God knows how scary it is just to, you know, he knows how much we fear death. And the, la the right. thing that he wants more than anything is for us to have that comfort that, yeah. that, that, you know, he has us in his hand because he did not put us here to feel that kind of fear and despair and that questioning of whether any of this amounts to anything, you know, and when, and, and uh, uh, that's, you know, death, whereas I sting, it's true. I don't fear death at all. Now I, I only fear it, it, in terms of like leaving my children behind, you know, uh, that that's it. But I, I, I know for a fact, I know, I know that when I die, I will be with the, I will be with the Lord and it will, you know, th there's no fear whatsoever. I have no doubt in my mind. And I, and I don't ever, ever actually deal with uh i haven't since i've been saved i haven't actually uh uh ever had that you know any type of those fears or doubts that come into my mind because that was the one thing that god had to, to show me which was that I, you know it has nothing to do with me it has nothing to do with me and that's not what this is about because he he took me up to the point where i was suffering so much and i had lost so much in this life more than most people my age ever do it takes a lot longer usually to accrue that much loss in your life and, you know, 30 years old. And um, uh, that's what he had to show me though, to make me even realize why people even seek God. Why do you even want to know? Cause I used to think it was pointless. Why do you even want to know? You know, you can't do anything about it and you can't really prove it. So why do people even care? You know, I'll find out when I'm dead basically, but I hadn't suffered enough to know that that's not acceptable, especially once you have children or, you know, once you're, you know, a, an adult, and you realize how fleeting life is, and you realize that um, you need to know. You need to know uh, uh, with with a guarantee and with all, like you know, with, with a promise. Like there's that there, there, there's nothing. Like there's no that you're not left up to chance whether you're going to have eternal life, whether there's going to be a happy ending on the other side of the grave, uh, because otherwise it, the, the life is so fearful. And so lonely. And no matter how happy you are, no matter, you know, how many children you have, how much you love your husband, you lay down at night and you know that um, death is looming for any one of you, you know, your loved ones or, or for yourself. And, and if you don't know for sure what happens when you die and that, it, and that it's not, you know, it's not something scary or negative, but it's actually beautiful and even better, you know, than your happiest day here on earth. It's, it's, it's absolutely gut-wrenching and so when God showed me that there had to be a way to know for sure that was really all it took for me to never worry about a false gospel because that was the whole point of me even seeking him was how could I know for sure so the people that um believe this gospel where they don't really know for sure that, that like where they where they think there could be some doubt as to whether they're saved um and you know they basically I mean really I, I've never heard a, a lordship person explain it any other way where 
where they can know for sure. Now they'll say, I guess, based on their works or whatever, but they don't know for sure that their works are going to keep up to par, you know, 10 years from now. So in reality, I mean, they don't, how could they have any peace at all? And uh, God showed me the entire point of it all was what, you know, was so that we would have that peace. So how could I ever fall for a false gospel or be tempted into a false gospel that would totally negate the point of me even seeking God in the first place? Because there's no, there's no promise in that. There's no peace in that. And, and, and the only and reason that, these, God, go on then. No, I was just going to say, well, the only reason, I mean, this is obvious, but the only reason these false teachers get a, uh, prosper is because they are able to use the scripture and interpret prop improperly. So they use these uh, in false interpretations of scripture and throw it in your face like a theological hand grenade. And it comes around at night at 5 a.m., slaps you in the face and wakes you up and laughs at you. Exactly. You know? And uh, what, the, what the, for me, the, the way to overcome that is to look look at deeply in, at those uh, scriptures yourself and ask the Lord to help you. He, he, he He's waiting for you to ask him to help him mm -hmm. help you, and he'll show you. I mean, I, to me, every time, I know this sounds trivial and it sounds like, oh, yeah, that that's not going to happen to me. I, I, I'm nobody. You know, I, I thought the same thing. Like, God's not going to help yeah. me. You know, I'm nobody. I'm I'm, <laughs> I, I'm terrible. I'm, I'm the worst person in the world. And um, but every way, everything, every, this is this will happen. <laughs> um, everything I was a, that was a weakness in my faith. He turns it. He it, literally he turned it into a strength. Uh, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, I I thought about, okay. Well, what about these uh, evolutionary ape men or whatever? That was uh, always bothered me for some reason. I just I just didn't like it for some reason. I didn't know what to do with it. It was like cognitive dissonance. Yeah. And I didn't believe it, but I just I didn't know what to do with it. And the Lord showed me in in, in ways that are to me now it's like it's actually a strength. And I, um, and also too, like all those verses that really bothered me, same thing, all those things that really bothered me. I didn't, I knew what they weren't saying, but I didn't know what they were saying. And if I didn't know what they were saying, how could I really uh, know what they were saying? And I know that sounds funny, but that's how Satan plays with you. You know, he's like, it, Satan tries to poke you every, try to find every little legal way to, to, uh, find a weakness in you and uh, exploit it. And and that's what God helped me do is, is to plug all those holes. So there's no loopholes. Yep. And um, that's what something I'm personally going to focus on is, go, get, you know, getting deep into those passages that people think that mean one thing, people like final call. Uh, I see that, that Anna talked about him uh, use and misinterpret and, and come at you and attack you and, and expose those what the real meaning is. And, and like you said, Angel, and like I've noticed too, like Matthew 5, 7, 21, 23, when I first read that, I had the first, that was one of the verses that woke me up and snapped me out of it. And it got used to, to realize, hey, I need to know exactly what this is saying. And, 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 it, and it ended up being that the interpretation, what it was saying was the exact opposite of what I initially thought it said. And yep. it's the exact opposite of what these false teachers say. So yep. I'm on a, I'm on a war path to uh, take these verses that people use and really shine light on them. And that's God willing. That's, that's exactly what I will do. Um, but again, it's not me. It, there's other resources you can go to, but I, I just hope to play some. I part. made a video on that verse too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cause it really reveals your heart. When you read yes. that, because I know I didn't know anything. I mean, I was just a total baby Christ, you know, having Me too. Yeah. The Bible, argued against the Bible my whole life. But the first time I read that verse, I focused in on my many wonderful works, you know, many wonderful works. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how oh, well, that's not like I knew that was the problem. The problem was this person was proclaiming all their many wonderful works. Before well, not Jesus. only that, not only that, but uh, you know, he says, "You workers of iniquity." Well, if you look, yes. if you look, the works that they were listed, they were not iniquitous works; they were great works. They were over the top, you know, cast out demons. And so I realized that, oh, okay, iniquity doesn't never... just mean sinful; it means unequal. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. Like your works will never save you. You know, um, and so it's really getting at all these verses that people say. Uh, uh, Paul, I was saying uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Lord, Lord, uh, not everyone who says to be Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only who does the will of my Father. Although, by the way, in John, it tells you exactly what the will of the Father is. In multiple places, it tells you what the will of the Father is, is to believe on the Son. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, again, false teachers, uh, you know, Satan uses the, the, God's word, twists it. They twist it and they shout it, twist and shout.
Uh-huh. Uh, yep. Yeah, and they do that. And it's always a verse that actually, expo- it's a verse, they, 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 it literally means the exact opposite of what they exactly. say and it exposes exactly. them. If there's a verse that bothers you, more than likely it means the exact opposite of what you think it means. Exactly. Exactly. Or you talking about like someone. With- yeah. Grace goggles is what Renee calls it. Right. Grace goggles. You gotta, you gotta put those on. That's right. Because I know I didn't want any part of a God having rejected God my whole life. I, I think it's easier when you come from atheism. I really do. Uh, because um, I didn't need a God that was just going to judge me and try to make me measure up and where I, I felt I, I wouldn't have anything to do with God like, like that. In fact, that's not the God I thought I was rejecting. I thought I was rejecting the God of grace. That's how, but see, I didn't understand my own sin. That was the problem. But so um, for me, like there was never any temptation to go into Lordship because I just would rather just go back to not even believing God or not even acknowledging him basically, because um, that wasn't, like I've said before, my, my family showed me unconditional love. So why would I want to, to seek or worship a God that couldn't even love as perfectly as my, you know, fallen, imperfect family, human family that, you know, they could, at the very least, they always showed me absolute unconditional love, never turned me away, no matter what well, I know, did. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good point. I mean, one of the things, too, is that, you know, a lot of people... Uh, like I, I started with the Old Testament and just read it as a babe. I mean, when I mean babe, I wasn't a small kid. I was just, I was just a believing person. I just, I, you know, I read it. I, I didn't question like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it lived six hundred years. There was actual flood. I didn't even question. It. I just read it as a babe. I just, I knew it was the word of God, so I just kind of accepted it and didn't even question it. And it was only later when I started, to, people asked me to challenge it, you know, and um, and that that was really disturbing to me. But uh, uh, so anyway, I so I, I started reading the Old Testament, got really far in it, and, and I was fami- familiar with the law. But then I started realizing, hey, you know what? I, I've been, I'm going to start reading the New Testament now, and and immediately I started reading the Gospels, and I realized right away, like what Christ was. I, I thought you know the New Testament was all about grace. Well, well, what Christ was saying was anything but graceful to these people. In fact, I, I remember thinking, and this is what I, I realized now: he wanted to, he wants what he wants you to come to this conclusion. I remember thinking, well, I'd rather be up under the law of Moses because. What Christ is saying is even harder than that, you know. Uh, if you look at a woman, you lusted with her, you, you you committed adultery with her in your heart. I mean, I'd rather go back under the law of Moses. That's easier to keep than what what Christ was teaching, um, and that's the exact conclusion he wants you to uh, arrive at. You know that you can't keep the law, and and so you need grace. It's they're they're totally separate, two uh, totally they're diametrically opposed, um, and, and you're, there's no. One foot in one and one in the other. Don't, there's no mixing whatsoever. It's it's pure grace, uh, unmerited, you know, um, unmerited without cause or cost. Try. Right. Sorry, I'm getting a little sleepy now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I just totally understand. Um, that actually is probably going to be where uh, we're going to begin to wind it up uh, tonight. Beloved, uh, we didn't get to our, our our last topic yet. We can speak about it briefly because it is getting late. We're getting to the we're past midnight hour on the East Coast, and we're getting close to it out here on the West Coast. Um, the last topic we're going to discuss for this evening, I hope that helped you, Sister Anna. Okay, you have been um, received, accepted. You are not rejected. The devil is a liar. <laughs> if you have believed on Jesus, you have the Father's highest blessing which was his intent which was to save you and to rescue you from damnation that's what he came for the lord said i did not come to condemn <laughs> the world but to call sinners to repentance and if you have believed in the lord jesus christ you have fulfilled according to the gospel of john the 6th chapter both the will and work of God. Now, what we have to do as believers, we all have to do this. We've all had to contend with this. You are not alone. You're not unique in this, um, which is labor, as Hebrews says, let us therefore labor to enter into the rest. Because the Bible says there remaineth now therefore a rest in Hebrews for the people of God. 
Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. And this is what the contention is going from this day forward. The enemy is going to come at you with a bunch of lies. You have to learn how to rebuke the devil in Jesus' name, bind the devil in Jesus' name, cast him out in Jesus' name, tell him to take his rock, his lies with him, kick rocks, devil, you are a liar. And if that, and it, listen, it doesn't always just come in, in, in the midnight hour, you know, when you're getting up to use the restroom or when you roll over and the devil shoots a thought, you ain't nothing but a worthless rat wretched, detestable sinner. It says, Satan, you are a lie. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your state, no matter what your mood, if you decide you want to cry or you don't feel loved or you don't feel this, or this, we don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. So you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. You cast down his vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, which is the scripture and what the scripture says about you, what the scripture has declared that you have in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Never forget Jesus, who is God Almighty, manifested in the flesh, declared and warned and told us that Satan is a liar. That's all he speaks is lies. So when he opens his mouth, remember, he is speaking a lie. When he comes against you at that lowest moment, that lowest time, the, that darkest hour, he is coming to kick you at your lowest moment because that's what he is, a serpent, and you can't get lower than that. And so what he does is try to come at you with lies to try to defeat you. But the Bible says we are overcomers with him. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And because you are in Christ, you are an overcomer with him. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and <laughs> praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and, 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 and shift uh, the topic this evening to fasting which is another tool in our arsenal against the enemy. We're going to speak about it briefly. Maybe we'll pick up with this topic the next time we come together so we can elaborate on it. But I wanted to uh, get you guys, uh, if you guys have ever fasted, if you've ever intended to fast, have you been successful at fast? Have you failed at a fast? Uh, so we can talk about this and show people this is another one of the arsenal uh, tools in our arsenal that the Lord has given us when we engage in spiritual warfare. Brother Ben or Sister Angel, which one of you would like to go well, first my, on it? I'll go first just because my, my experience is really limited. Uh, I fasted for like three days when I – about 10 years ago when, again, when I was stuck between – the law and grace. And I didn't know. Uh, so basically there's, if you're stuck there, you're, you're under the law. Anyways. Uh, so I was very confused, uh, and kind of thought all Christians were the same. I didn't realize there was such a thing as lordship versus free grace. I knew nothing. Um, and I thought I, I tried to fasting to be more spiritual, so to speak. So I was all for all intents and purposes, an unbeliever, uh, at that point. And, uh, I, you know, so I didn't really see any benefit from it per se. However, um, now, however, now that I'm a believer, confident in my salvation assured um i do do it periodically but uh, i'll do it for like a uh, half day maybe um and i know there's a lot of health benefits to it um uh, but i haven't really done much um with it in terms of a spiritual perspective um and so i'm, I'm sure it's probably a tool that uh that i have underutilized and so i'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about it Hello. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm here. I had to get to my mic button here. Uh, Sister Angel, would you like to go ahead? And do you have anything you'd like to say about fasting before I? Sorry, I was muted. Here? Yeah. Um. Well, I have been since I've been saved. I have been either pregnant or breastfeeding, uh, the entire time. So I have not actually fasted because, well, while I'm pregnant, um, I haven't. I, I just didn't, it, it, to, to me, it just seemed like a scary thing to do while you're pregnant. I, I didn't seem like it was something advisable to do, um, you know, low blood sugar and everything. I'm not sure if that's, that's the, you know, actually the case. It might've actually been okay. But while I was breastfeeding, I definitely don't want to fast because it is hard. It, you're always worried about your milk supply. I, I've been, you know, just afraid to do it, but I have been looking forward to being able to do it. Um, which hopefully now within the next, uh, uh, five, five or six months, I'll actually be able to start because I have accidentally fasted before and, um, straight, you know, where I just didn't eat, um, even, you know, pretty recently, uh, uh, 
you know, where there'll be like a whole day where I don't eat. And I have noticed that I, it wasn't intentional though, but I, I, I strangely, a lot of energy, um, and actually not feeling where, whereas when I, you know, regularly, uh, after the first time I eat, I, I get this horrible, like drowsy feeling reliably around noon or one o'clock. I just want to go to sleep, and take a nap. And I either like power through it or I just sit there and, and debate taking a nap for like the, like an hour and a half. And then by that time I, I I'm tired, but, uh, I didn't actually take a nap. So I'm not refreshed, but I, I, you know, I'm just actually tired, but it's got too much time's gone by. So I don't actually nap or anything. And I do I, see apple, how food, oh. what I was just going to say, I had the, I had the same problem too. I, I eat, I get food coma an hour later. Um, and what I found was apple cider vinegar, um, really helped with oh. that. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I needed it. Yeah. But so anyway, Lisa is going to have the most uh, information to share about this. And I'd, I'd um, love to hear what she has to say. Sorry about that, guys. My computer's lagging just a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, fasting is something I've been doing for a long time. It cracked me up because I heard Jason Fun Fung talking about this. I don't know what denomination of faith uh, that he is, but he had said when his church during Lent would, uh, they would say they were fasting. Uh, nobody was ever doing it. And I said, well, I don't know what kind of church you went to, because when our pastor called for a fast, we fasted. So, um, you know, I had done as a teenager, uh, I did a 40 day water fast one time. Wow. And had, yeah. I had done numerous, uh, like, 15, 20 day, 10 day, three day. I mean, wow. So fasting has always been a part. I mean, it's just the way I grew up and, and um, I, I had read books on it. So I knew that fasting wasn't starving. Uh, there was um, a book that was written by Dr. Alan Cott, MD, uh, called Fasting the Ultimate Diet. And then there was another one uh, that he did called Fasting as a Way of Life. So I read those books back back then when, when I was a teenager. And I knew that fasting was, was safe for otherwise healthy people, people who weren't like on some like heavy medications and stuff. So I wasn't on any medications. I was otherwise healthy. So I struck out fasting. Um, then I stopped for, for a period of time. I was doing a lot of working and the, the, the type of work that I was doing that was very high stress. And sometimes when you're stressed, you know, you, you, fasting and stress until you learn why it's so important doesn't seem to go together. Uh, that being said, um, and then many years later after I, this is how, kind of how I got into discovering what water was best because I had went on about a 25 day water fast and I, I don't think I was stupid enough to use tap water, but I think I was using bottled water, but it wasn't, distilled water and I started feeling really crappy around day 25. I mean like really terrible. So I ended up like breaking the fast with some uh, soup and uh, I remember was why, you know, was I feeling so crappy and then I started realizing the importance of the water that you were using uh, during the fast. So I made those corrections and had done a few short fasts, maybe up to 10 days after that. But then I started getting into um, what was uh, what is called dry fasting. Now, how did this happen? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I started wanting to see how to get the most health benefit in the shortest period of time. And well, one day uh, while I was thinking about it, I actually was contemplating this different thing. I had, hadn't really considered dry fasting at all. I hadn't really heard it at this point. And I heard uh, a Mormon actually she uh identifies as a mormon it was something totally unrelated to religion i just happened to be watching she was ha uh, speaking about some different political stuff and she mentioned that she was a mormon and her father was a mormon and her father used to strike out on these long extended dry fasts and i was like dry fasting what the heck is dry fasting so i a little bit about it because we started hearing a lot about Ramadan with all of the different uh, things that was happening in the news based on terrorism and stuff. So you learned about Ramadan and a lot of different things concerning Islam as a result. And I discovered, uh, I knew about dry fasting, but I had never really looked into it. So when she talked about it and she said, yeah, she said Jesus dry fasted 
She said it's only kind of dry fasting. Uh, dry fast is what they were doing in the Bible. And so I was like, what? <laughs> so I, I said, I've been a Christian all this night, time, and I did not know they were dry fasting. Let me get my Bible out and go look and confirm this. And then sure enough, I went and saw the scripture where Moses had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible said he ate not food or drink. And then... uh. And then I uh, went and saw where Esther, when her uncle came to her and said, you need to go and please before the king because they have set us up to die. <laughs> and uh, her, her uncle's pleading with her. And she's like, I can't go before the king unsummoned. You know, I'm paraphrasing this. And, and uh, she, she tells her uncle, she says, well, look, she says, uh, you go tell the people to eat not food or drink for three days and three nights. And then she says, and I and my handmaidens will do the same. And then I'll go before the king unsummoned. And if I die, I die. Now I want to tell you, so when I started seeing this in the scripture, I was like, what? <laughs> so I said, now they have told us forever that if we didn't, what do they say? It's the three through the three, three, three rule, right? They say three days, three minutes without air, three days without water, was it in three weeks? I think it is without food, is what they claim that a, a person <laughs> can only do. And come to find out when you study about what dry fasting does to the body, uh, the body actually goes in, and for lack of a, a more technical term, <laughs> cracks open the fat cells and literally creates for itself biological water. Uh, the fat contains a certain amount of fluid. And it will go in and break open the fat cells, take that biological water, use it to cleanse whatever was toxins in the cell and flush that out of the body right along with providing the hydration that the body needs. And when I started looking into this and found that out, I was just absolutely astonished. And wow. then if you know, in the book of Isaiah, it promises that if you are to fast, that uh, two of the things it promises there is that your health will spring forth speedily and he will make fat your bones. <laughs> so uh, I started uh, uh, trying it. I said, well, I, I felt after gaining enough information and reading a couple of books on it, one is by a Russian doctor. I don't remember his first name. His last name is Dr. Filinov. Um, it actually had to be translated into English and it's kind of a little crude PDF that they have available. I'll put a link in the uh, description when we're done this evening um, where you can download it and read it if you want to. Um, very interesting information, the different healing that he was able to achieve with numerous patients. The Russians are like experts on, on dry fast. You don't hear about it. They cover it up. And I don't mean necessarily the Russians. I'm talking about the information. When you go to search about dry fasting, you're going to see it's dangerous. It's this, it's that. Now, listen, uh, disclaimer, I'm not telling anyone to do anything. I'm saying do your own research. And um, one thing that they, they warn and caution against, they say is probably contraindicative for people who are over 70. Uh, but I, I think if you're 70 and you feel healthy enough and you do your own research and you decide you want to try it, that's totally up to you. I wouldn't let that dissuade me. But um, it's not recommended, for example, on people who are on medications and things like that. But for otherwise healthy people, uh, there's plenty of videos right here on YouTube, people who have done numerous. I haven't gotten past three and a half days. That's, that's where I've hit. But I have to be honest, when I did the three and a half days, Okay, I did the first day, 24 hours. I was like, oh, this is, this was easy. In fact, I felt it was easier than any water fast I had ever been on. Now, that was my personal experience. I've heard other people say pretty much the same thing. Uh, after I did the 24 one, and I was like, wow, this, is, this was, that was pretty easy. So I said, okay, well, next time I do it, I'm going to try for two days. And I got to two days and I said, well, I made it two. I might as well go three. And I ended up doing three and a half days. Uh, and, and literally I had never felt better in my life. And I've since done that a couple of times and I've done frequent 24 hour dry fast, uh, where I just dedicate one day to fasting and praying. And this is when I actually did end up having during this period of time that, um, spiritual warfare dream that I, I had encountered, um, uh, dark forces, <laughs> let's just say it that way. So, uh, I, but I was I was deliberately fasting and praying, so I wasn't surprised 
that that happened because I was fasting and praying to engage in spiritual warfare. I get up in the midnight hour. There's a lot of different things, y'all, in the scripture about praying at the midnight hour. And we need to remember as believers, like we're up right now, before y'all go to bed tonight, spend 15 minutes praying because the the evil ones are up right now doing prayers, incantations, hexes, vexes, curses. The, the devil does his work in, in the night. And this is why most Christians are sadly sleeping. And we should rise up and start praying, rebuking, binding the force of darkness forces of darkness in Jesus name, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, some of y'all say, I can't fast. Wait, I got good news for you. You already do. Let's say you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and you go to sleep and sleep until five or six o'clock in the morning. And before you open your mouth to eat something, what do they call it? Fasting. What? Break no, fast. they call it break breakfast. Fast. Break, oh, break, break fast. Yeah, break yeah. fast. So, <laughs> look Sorry, at I was thinking of with... diabetes, blood sugar <laughs> testing. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. You're good. You're good. Um, you guys think about this. You can dedicate that time. Let's say you stop eating at eight o'clock and it's two hours before you go to bed. Now, I'm not saying you have to drive fast. Just start low and slow. OK, start with your 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 water. No, no problem. Start then declare at eight o'clock. I declare this time until I break my fast in the morning with what breakfast that this time is dedicated to the Lord. OK, as a fast unto him. Yes, you're going to go to sleep. Show me in the Bible where it says you can't go to sleep when you're fasting. You won't find it. So you go ahead, dedicate that time to the Lord. If you rise up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom, pray, spend 15 minutes praying. And then when you wake up, you pray before you go to bed. You pray when you wake up or roll over in the middle of the night till you fall back to sleep. And then pray when you get up in the morning before you uh, break your fast and thank the Lord that he got you through that time. You dedicated that time to him and you spent periodic times throughout that evening praying, buking and binding the forces of darkness in Jesus name. This is one tactic that you can use to begin before you strike out on anything longer. Then maybe the next time you say, well, you know what? I'm going to dedicate two more additional hours or four more additional hours to this fast. So you stopped eating at 8 p.m. at night. You wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. You say, I'm going to forego breakfast, Lord, and I'm going to make it to lunch. And I'm going to dedicate this time as part of that fast continuing to you. See, y'all don't get into these boxes that people try to place us in. If you can only do four hours and you wake up in the morning and you say, look, I'm going to dedicate from now until noon to the Lord as my fasting period. Lord didn't say you couldn't do that. So you go ahead and you dedicate that time to him. And during that time, you pray while you're fasting. And it doesn't have to be, you know, consistent for the whole six hours. If you can do that, do it. But if you can't, just do it periodically during that time. So think outside the box. Don't put yourself in a box. The Lord ain't never said it had to be, you know, A to Z a certain way. You can start where you start. Start where you're at. You don't have to strike out and try to do a 40-day water fast. Everybody ain't able. Doesn't make you weak. You build up to things. You you set yourself up just like if you were going to go train to do a marathon, a 10K. You don't start out running a 10K. You might only be able to do a half K. <laughs> so, But that's where you start. And then you continue and you add to it and you add to it and you build it up, okay? So that's what I wanted to offer encouragement to people out there. Say, I've never fasted before. You can start low and slow, okay? And there are tremendous health benefits to fasting. You need to start researching it. Uh, if you like to read, plenty of good books on fasting that are out there. I'd recommend some of the ones by Jason Fung, as I mentioned, Dr. Alan Cott. His are a little older, but this was like before fasting like became a thing necessarily. Uh, when he wrote these books, I think it was back in the early to late 80s, right in there somewhere. And then uh, you have people that are right here on YouTube, their own personal testimonials about their fasting experience that you can listen to. 
glean information, take notes, and then start low and slow if you think you're interested in doing that. But remember, that's that's right here in your Bible. And that is something that we can use not only to, the Bible says one of the other things is to break uh, the bands of, let me see, I need to pull that up so I can read it. Could you guys go ahead and take over me for a second while I find that sure. scripture and I can sure. read it correctly here? I, I remember when I did the, I think I did like a two-day fast. And I remember when I broke it, uh, or while I was doing it, I, I mean, I felt like I could do anything. It's like you, you have, it's like putting your body in absolute subjection to your, to your will, uh, which is the same thing I do. I, I feel when I do the, um, when I work out, you know, and Paul says I beat my body and, and, and I think it helps. It's, it's really good to exercise self-control. And one way of doing it is doing it through a, an extreme thing like fasting, um, or working out or whatever. Um, you, you know, a lot, of, you know, one one struggle I I uh, one thing I I struggle with is, you know, I want to like doing it, doing this or that because I don't feel good. Well, I I soon realized, you know, if you're if you're chasing your feelings, you're never gonna feel good. But if you do something good, the good feelings come out come from that. So you yeah, you gotta go yeah. through a little pain, but then the but then the good feelings are come after, and it's it's just so sweet, and that's how that's that's how true. I snap out of it a lot of times. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Like with, um, for me, uh, uh, one of the best ways to get out of a funk like that, even if I, like, if I don't feel like I have like the energy that day, like, cause there's some days where I just, I, you know, I, I, I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I, and I go out and have so much fun, like gardening or doing whatever. And then other days when I wake up, I don't have any motivation, but what I'd, I'd like to go do those things that are fun, uh, that I, that I like to do, but I, I just feel like I don't have that that motivation to do it. I feel like depressed. But then when, when you actually go out and you make yourself do it anyway, um, right. and you find that you actually, you actually were able to do it and what you, you did enjoy it, you feel so much better afterwards. Um, right. And, uh, and I, and I, and I agree with the, you know, the idea of a fast or even like what you said with the, you know, exercise, it is that, that it's an amazingly uh, powerful, uh, uh, it's like a tonic almost like when you, when you do exercise with self-control and you, uh, yes. and you're not a slave to your body, which right. is um, something I think we all, we don't even realize. We just, we just think it's so normal, but um, uh, that's why I think that's one of the points of the fast is that for God, God's showing you don't live by bread alone. Yep. And that he's the water of life. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's, that's right. a, I think that's a symbolism there. Yeah. I was looking for the scripture. It was in Isaiah. It's in Isaiah 58. That whole uh, first part of the chapter is talking about fasting there. So if you guys want to uh, look at that and reference it, I don't want to go into it so because of the latest hour of the hour. We're going to uh, be ending here shortly, but pointing you in the right direction to go read that chapter. But I'll read one verse from it in Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Some of you guys have been under different spiritual attacks or different spiritual, um, maybe even bondage in some areas. And you've tried and tried and tried to get free from those things, but you've never tried fasting and dedicating a period of time to the Lord and fasting and prayer to do just that, to undo the heavy burdens and to break those bonds that might be on you. And you might want to consider this, beloved. Um, the, the other thing is I wanted to talk about briefly is how fasting actually uh, financially is extremely beneficial to you. Mm. How is that? Well, right now we're going through a difficult time. And let's say you have enough food. Let's say you had food storage, okay? And your food storage is enough for you for a year. Well, if you were to, let's say that's for, for three meals a day, if you decided to dedicate one day to fasting, you just doubled your food supply. If you, in other words, if you did it every other day, if you said, I'm not going to eat, I'll eat today, but I won't eat tomorrow. And then I'll eat the next day. You just doubled your food supply because you're skipping every other day. And when so, you get on the fast, you probably eat less too because your 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 stomach shrinks and you just you can't true. eat as much as you did before. That's true. And you may you may not even you may decide there are people who do what's called OMAD, for example, one meal a day. 
uh, where they'll eat just dinner or just breakfast, whatever that best meal is for them that they feel like, oh, this is when I really get hungry and I really need that energy. They will pick that hour of the day, they'll eat, and then they don't eat again for 23 more hours. And I don't know if that'll work for you, beloved. Listen to your body. Play around with it. It's your body. And don't feel like you're defeated. If you if you say, oh, I want to try one meal a day, and you 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 say, I'm going to make it to dinner, but you, you skip breakfast, but you couldn't make it through lunch. That's okay. Don't look at that as defeat. Look at what you did. You accomplished skipping breakfast, and you made it to lunch. But during that time, pray. Use that time, dedicate that time unto the Lord. And then maybe you try that for a week. Okay, for the whole week, I'll just skip breakfast. And then the next week say, okay, now I'll try to make it where I skip breakfast and lunch. Play around with it. It's your fast. You've chosen to do it. They're the only rules are the ones you create for yourself. And if you need to make adjustments, you make adjustments. Do not let the devil put you into bondage to anything. OK, uh, what we do is 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 as unto the Lord, whether we do or not do is as unto the Lord. Don't let him put you in bondage. But I wanted you to look at that as one strategy to be able to save money. Just think if you spent, you know, if your meals and you prepare all your meals, it will just say at home, especially with what's going on right now. And a meal cost you four to five or six dollars and you skipped a meal uh, during that day. That's add that up at the end of the week. One meal at $5 is $35 you save. Times four is $140 for that month. See, the Lord, what's beautiful about the Lord is he has ways that multiplies things to us. When we do what he's instructed, <laughs> when he shows us, it literally multiplies to an amazing amount that you can't even perceive until you start looking into what he has instructed. For example, with a dry fast, they have said that one day of dry fast is the equivalent of a three-day water fast. So if a person did decide to do a dry fast, as is instructed in the scripture, you already doing one day triple the benefits of what a three-day fast would be. This is what I'm talking about, how the Lord multiplies when we do the things he's instructed us to do. And I just wanted to share that with you. Guys, do you have anything else before we say goodnight this evening? Or morning, rather? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I think we covered everything. I I, I uh, just yeah hope, like, if anybody has anything that they'd like for us to talk about, you know, put it in the comments or something like that. Maybe we can check it and see if... Uh, uh, get some feedback from the audience, but um, I think we never run out of things that we <laughs> we want to discuss. So hopefully we can uh, uh, meet back here. Uh, I guess next Saturday, if you're going to be available. Oh yeah, next Saturday we can definitely do it if you guys are willing. I'm certainly am. I have this is perfect timing for me too. Although one of my little ones is still awake, but uh, that's why I've been muting intermittently. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this has been wonderful, and uh, uh, I. Uh, I just hope, you know, with the fasting thing, just one thing I want to add is, you know, it, it's something, there's no reason to feel pressure, to, right? you know, when you're trying it, because God doesn't say you have to do it. You know, mm -mm. it's something you should do. It's something, you know, like it, 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 it's good for you. And it's actually like a, it's sort of like a gift he's given us, like, you know, for all the health benefits and also to strengthen your walk with him. Because imagine how, Amen. how much your faith will grow when you see that what you can do. If you actually, you know, when you actually succeed in fasting for, you know, a period of time you never thought possible and it makes you have more faith in his word too, because it seems unimaginable when you think about fasting that long, you know, it's like 40 days that just seems unimaginable. But then when you, when you actually do it, um, it, it, it all, it always, uh, it's just amazing to me when, um, when I see how, how, how like real and like, uh, tangible some of God's promises are, you know, just mm -hmm. like, even when it comes to, to praying, like I, I, yesterday I, I was cooking and I, I couldn't find the garlic salt, <laughs> which I had, I was, I always put that on my steak and I, I, I have so much faith in the Lord and I'm so close with him because he has, he has just repeatedly shown me that, you know, he's, he's right here with me. He thought he, he, he cares about what I care about. He has compassion. Even when I'm being a turd all day, I'm in a bad mood. I'm yelling at the kids. And I was yesterday, I was in a bad mood 
And um, and I couldn't find the garlic salt. And I went to him. I was being a, a brat kind of. I was kind of whining. Like, Lord, please help me find the garlic salt. And I, as I'm saying, I'm thinking, he shouldn't help me. I'm being a turd. And right then, right then, it was right, he, right then, it was like immediately, as soon as the prayer finished, it was right there in the cabinet in this weird place that I put it. We, right Every time, every time, because it's about humbling yourself. It's about going to him like mm. a little child. And he, For there's sure. nothing too small because what he loves is that you trust him because, you know, imagine all the people that say they believe in him, but they don't actually talk to him. Like they really do believe he's right there and that he's real, that he really loves them. And that he has, they have this actual relationship with it. So to him, it, I'm sure it's very precious when somebody actually does believe that to where they actually do talk to him. Like he's right there sitting right there able to, t- to to tell you where the garlic salt is as dumb as that sounds but that's like a real relationship it's a real relationship it's real it's not it's not some theoretical thing that you say you believe it but you actually believe it that's what god cares about it, it it's not about performance it's not performance based it's literally how you would want your children like how would you ever want your child to sit around worrying whether you were going to reject them kick them out on their butt like your little child whether you were going to stop loving them if they weren't good enough, you know, I mean, that's like, as a parent, that's horrifying. That's why he puts parenthood in our lives mm-hmm. so that we understand his love for us. That's right. So that's why we should never fear that we could lose uh, God's love, lose our relationship with him, lose our status as his child once we're born into God's family. And, 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 I, and I always try to point to these real life illustrations uh, even more like, uh, because for me, that was what I had to get my head around. And once I got my head around all the ways he shows us in real life, demonstrates in real life, the love he has for us and the relationship he wants with us and why, why it is eternal security and why salvation really is this um, uh, just a merciful, loving, self-sacrificial act on God's part. Uh, 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 these illustrations are very helpful for me because I find a lot of times when people can't get their head around a scripture it's really because they're, they're coming from the wrong spirit entirely and, and they're not looking at it uh, like they're looking at this relationship with God in some different way than they would a parent and a child. But that's exactly how you're supposed to look at it. And I think mm-hmm. most of us would think a parent was, was just what a scumbag parent that would base their love for their child uh, on the child's performance. That's just not that's unheard of. That's unthinkable for most people. That, uh, mm-hmm. that, that, so, so, uh, you know, to Sister Anna, I just want you to, to think of those real life illustrations when you're getting those, uh, doubts with the, the word. Sometimes you just need to, 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 to change your perspective. And so that's when I find that those real life illustrations are helpful so that you can come back to those scriptures and, mm-hmm. and look at them the right way because you, you you're, you're actually, um, uh, you, you have to have your head on the right way in order to, in order to understand. A lot of these verses and that's why they, they, they can be stumbling stones to those who try to come at them from a from a, 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 a prideful perspective a perspective where they're trying to try to exalt themselves but when mm-hmm. you know it, he's put so many things in our life where we can um or where we can understand the simplicity of salvation and what it really is which is that which is when you when you when you actually trust god that's, that's really right. what it all comes down to it's just it's truly trusting him as a child trust their parents Amen. Um, and that's you know, really what he wants. I love that you said that because it helps me segue into one other thing before I let Ben help close us out here this evening. And that is that some people are saying in the chat, well, I tried to fast and it didn't work. I failed. I'm like, no, you didn't fail. You learned something. If you made it three hours, if you made it six hours, you made it 12 hours, whatever it was, doesn't matter. Don't do that to yourself. Do you do you say that when your your little sweet baby was learning how to walk and mm-hmm. he or she took three or four steps, you were so excited that they took yeah. those three or four steps, yeah, you did exactly. bust it open. You were yeah. you didn't go, oh, oh, you fell. Unless yeah. you, nobody, <laughs> somebody in a twisted mind would do that. So don't do yeah. that to yourself. Beloved, yeah. you struck out, you tried, you attempted, and however long you made it, your father in heaven was rejoicing because you attempted it. You know how many people don't even attempt? You remember when Jesus talked about the people with the talents? The one that that would that when he was most displeased with the one that buried it. What they didn't even try to do anything. So right. beloved, don't 
do that to yourself. And if you haven't before now, that's okay. Go like this. <sighs> See that? That means you still got a chance to do it. You're still breathing. So do what you can do. Don't worry about it. I don't want you guys thinking, well, I can't do 40 days. I can't do 10 days. I can't do the three. Do what you can do if it's just skip a meal. If it's just extend your breakfast from when you wake up one or two hours. I didn't tell you you even have to skip breakfast. Just say, Lord, I'm going to dedicate this next two hours as prayer and fasting to you. So don't put yourself in a box. Do what works for you. That's your offering unto the Lord. Has nothing to do with anyone else's ability because you know why? No one else can fast for you. So don't worry about what other people can do. You do what you can do. Just like that little baby when they're starting to learn how to walk and they take those first couple of steps. That's you. Don't worry about anybody else. Brother Ben, go ahead and close this out, brother. <laughs> uh, it, you guys uh, really gave me a lot to think about and further explore. And I'm, I'm, uh, I, I want to try fasting again too. So, um, yeah, another good program tonight. Um, I'm happy to be a producer or a participant anytime. Uh, you just let me know. Um, but it was great to have you guys here tonight, and uh, hope you found it as uh, uh, edifying and valuable as I did. Okay. Praise the Lord, beloved and most high God. I want to say in closing tonight, I never want to do leave a broadcast that's live without saying the clear gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as it declares in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how that Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, resurrected on the third day. Beloved, that is the gospel that was the payment for the sin of the whole world, all sin, past, present, and quite remarkably, future. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will save you on his, in his finished work, his death, burial, and resurrection, that he is God. You are saved. You trust in him for the payment of your sin. That was the payment. And if you believe on him, he'll save your soul from damnation forever. And you can't lose it no matter what. That is the gospel. You won't hear it from you know, uh, most preachers on YouTube or even in the world because they want to load it with works and works do not go with the gospel because the only work that was important was the work that he did for us, not what we can do for him. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us tonight, beloved. There's, there's 18 of you out there that hung with us all the way through and went up and down, but it never really mm -hmm. went lower than that tonight. And I thank you for hanging in there with us. You guys are truly and officially, I pronounce you night owls <laughs> because you made it <laughs> all the way through to the end. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Thank you again, brother Ben. Thank you again, Sister Angels. Always a pleasure. You guys just bring out the best of me when we have these, uh, you know, what I like to call late night chats and just allowing our uh, visitors to listen in on the conversation of things that were already stirring in our hearts. So be blessed, beloved of the Most High God. Until the next time, in the mighty name of King Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen.